The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We walk out! We walk out! Sports! 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 Sport. Hello, beautiful people! And welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Big Sports Wednesday, March 6, 2024. This sports program starts now! Sports! Our glorious thing, nailed it. Ladies and gentlemen, today is going to be a fantastic day. We'll have Big Perk joining us in about 20 to 30 minutes to talk about what's going on in the NBA. We'll have Dalton Schultz join us, tight end for the Houston Texans, who just signed a three-year, $36 million deal yeah. with the Texans after being a Dallas Cowboy and then having immense success with C.J. Stroud. And C.J. Stroud is... Historically, the greatest rookie quarterback of all time. One of his best weapons sticks around. We'll talk to him in the third hour. I'm also joined by the Toxic Table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. I'll tell you what, you're starting five. This one is a good one. Uh, now we're getting creative. Now we're doing the sports. Now we got the animals. This shirt is maybe my favorite shirt that you've put on your body thus far. Wow, thank you very much. Yeah, starting five, you know it is NBA season, kind of an NBA reference. Actually, a uh, good friend, Evan Foxy, got this for me in Africa. What, what did he get you guys? Uh, I got a I got a video to watch of uh, elephant walking up to his pool, okay, and That's drinking cool. his water and then walking around. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think I saw a hyena skipping uh, through uh, uh, through the safari down uh -huh. there. I think I saw uh, he, oh he climbed the mountain. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. big mountain. Uh, he, I got, I, these eyes got a lot of good content. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. Hey, welcome back to America, back. Safari Fox. Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. Your he, gifts are in the mail still. They're still coming. He Africa's left me far away. He yeah. left me alone for two weeks, which is the greatest gift you could ever give me. Okay, oh. see, happy birthday yeah, uh, from Foxy <laughs> Early you, to Foxy. one half of the hammer. Bad <laughs> Cowboys Tone Diggs. Way to go. Uh, that's a great shirt. Foxy did well there. Yeah, he did. And he usually doesn't. So I appreciate it because, he, oh. you know, me and him, our styles, we don't see eye to eye. No. Okay. Well, your style is that of somebody who doesn't have one. Sure. Well, I, yeah. see, I disagree. Well, I mean, uh, I'll be honest. I got compliments on my shoes this morning from. I'm sure you did. Yeah, and and they were genuine. Yep. Uh, obviously, uh -huh. the shirt. You know, Fo Foxy's an H and M guy. Uh, I go into H and M and they kick me out. They know I'm not there. <laughs> Foxy <laughs> and Abercrombie and Fitch on right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hey. Ooh, I, went into, shirt. I went into Abercrombie and Fitch the other day. They're very different than what they used to be. All the way back. Really. All the way back. Okay. All the way How back. So? Not the music and the smells anymore? They got like Daytona 500 shirts yep. in there. Whoa, whoa. Oh. Okay. Hey. Hey. Hold on. NFL yeah. shirts in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like oversized stuff, but it's not oversized on me. Is the Intimidator? Sure. They got Intimidator shirts, number three? I don't know if there's Dale or not, but that is the okay. that is the vein in which uh, mm. Abercrombie and Fitch is doing their things. Mm. There was only one size 36 waist in the entire store for okay. the male sex. So the same problems I was having in high school with Abercrombie <laughs> and Fitch, I'm having here as an adult. Okay. But I will say... They have dodged, ducked, dipped, dived, and dodged mm -hmm. their way mm -hmm. through fashion. They were packed. Store really? was packed out. Interesting. It feels like Abercrombie and Fitch is all the way back. And the store is really coolly designed. But yeah, they're all the way back. I think they have a deal with NFL, and that's how I first got into them, because they have the old God. school lion stuff, so I had to get that. It felt like I was walking through like a basic white person Cabela. Yes. Oh, okay. Cabela's. Well okay. said. Uh -huh. you know, like well as you're walking said. through, it's wow. like a difference. It was like, yeah, it's like there's comfortable stuff over here. You got the slides over here. Mm. You got the throwback stuff over here. Okay. Like you're just walking through like a Cabela store. I mean, $90 for a crew neck sweatshirt. <laughs> so I didn't buy anything except for a pair of camouflage pants. And I, yeah. they were the only, Sweet. They were okay. the only size 36 in the entire store, but they are cool. Wait till I debut those bad boys. I was going to say yes. where they've been. Today might have been the day because we were with a man whose fashion is normally yeah. mm -hmm. top of the line. Mm -hmm. And today is no different. Last year, he spent the entire offseason with us. This year, he's going to obviously be back. And also, this year, he is a signed rapper mm -hmm. launching an entire career. Damn right. Pro bowler, West Virginia University Mountaineer legend, mm -hmm. friend of the program, family of the show, ladies and gentlemen, 
Pac Man Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Pac, yeah. Pac, yeah. Pac, yeah. Pac, real deal. Rap, rap yeah. shit's happening right now. It, right, right now it's happening. Ferrari kid out. Sob on the way. And this um, is through Universal. Yeah. Okay, this is like real, hey, Legit. signed with a label, yeah. mm-hmm. doing the whole thing right now. Doing the whole thing. I got a little sum up under my sleeve on the uh, SOB, on the remix side of things. Okay. Ooh. Um, Song isn't even out yet. Good. Already got a remix okay. lined up. This is throwback. This is old school. Uh, Pac-Man, I think even people that don't know you as well as we do would assume that Pac-Man Jones would have the perfect setup to be a rapper. Mm-hmm. Like that, right? right? Yeah. Like out of Atlanta, obviously. What? Everything that you've been through, yeah. the mistakes you've made, yep. the things that happened, the comebacks, the night, the empathetic side, yeah. you know, family human yeah. that you are, businessman that you are. Yeah. Let's go. Here yeah. we go. Come on now. Let's go back. And you got them pushing you right. Universal's behind you. It's like, here we go. And this n- next song, Standing on Business SOB, we have heard mm-hmm. from like yeah. the very beginning yep. yeah. the entire thing. Banger, dude. Oh, yeah. Banger. Goes. I think this is the one is this is gonna push the needle a little bit. I think so. And yeah. in, in anything, just you know this, uh, you got a great work ethic. You just keep going. Mm-hmm. It feels like you just keep going. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of people that aren't talented at all making it in music. Oh yeah, plenty. Oh yeah, right. That, that's oh, a thing yeah. that happens. Uh huh. And you got talent and a work ethic and a story. So mm-hmm. we can't wait to see what you do with it. Congrats on all that. Great yeah. to see you back. Thanks, boy. Pac- Appreciate it, my boy. Uh, speaking of Pac-Man Jones, obviously what you're known for is being incredibly fast. And as we start this conversation about the combine, and Travis Kelsey told some stories on New Heights podcast to his brother Jason Kelsey, which we'll get to about the combine meetings. You know, because you always hear about the combine meetings, like these teams are meeting these players, and it's all scripted, is what they say. Mm-hmm. Everything's scripted, so normally you don't hear about a bad meeting unless somebody is literally terrible, especially at this stage of the whole thing. And then there's the on-field stuff where we're just looking for what the most explosive and exciting player did. What? This year, it was the fastest 40 in the history. It was Xavier Worthy at the University of Texas running a 4-2-1 official 40. That came after running a 4-2-5 40 and saying, you know what? I would like to run again because I want to get the record. Mm-hmm. They actually were talking to him in between runs mm-hmm. after the four two five, and they were like, uh, he's probably going to shut it down. In the day of people sitting out because they're scared to get hurt, four two five, you're good. Yeah. Uh, you are, hey, yeah. we are fast. He said, you know, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try to get the record. So he saw four two five. Was excited visibly, but inside probably a little mm-hmm. bit bummed. Mm-hmm. Probably yeah. a little bit bummed. I can get faster than that. Tries it again, runs it. You're a human that ran a what? Four two eight. What? Well, Damn. That's so fast. Moving. You got draft number six overall yep. as a corner, returner, and a slot receiver, inevitably, for the Tennessee Titans. Why is everybody faster now than ever, you think? And I, is that what you think? Do you think the world is getting faster I now? think the world is getting faster. I think the surface is way more better. The shoes are way better. Um, this kid just shot out a rocket. Yes, like yeah. You can tell certain t- when kids are really fast, you can be like, oh, yeah, that kid is really fast. He's track fast. I got a chance to look at his film. He ran pretty good routes, too. Yeah. yeah, well, they and in the modern NFL, right? They can put his ass in oh, everywhere yeah. and motions, and he's gone. Now they're 165, 170 pounds. I don't know what it is exactly. You That's small, obvi- but yeah, that is small, right? Yeah, that is small. But in the modern NFL, you can avoid the hits. Yeah, you can't hit him. You, where can you hit him? Low. Um, if he if he know how to protect himself, and I think he do. He's played at a high level, so I think I think he'll be all right. Now you enjoyed hitting humans, right? I loved it. <laughs> loved it. Oh, my God. And you used to do actual research on guys that enjoyed getting hit and not getting uh-huh. hit, right? Yes, I did. And talk a lot of trash. Yeah, too. you're a menace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolute right. menace out yeah. there. It's a beautiful thing. Do you think that the way football is going, speed is going to be the big thing? And this is happening in basketball. Yeah. yeah. This is happening in basketball. As skill continues to evolve, which it is, there's always going to be a physicality to it. But on the back end, there's a chance that the there's probably going to be a lot more like get out of bounds, get down mm-hmm. with these guys yeah. that are Ferraris. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah. you don't want like – Rocks hitting for like there's no reason to hurt one of these. He, 165 pounds is small. It's small. If he's on, now he can get bigger and everything like that. But one big shot, even from a corner, you know, let alone a linebacker and everything, you got to be worried about that forever. Modern NFL, not a problem. No, 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 no not no, at all. Not no. a problem at all, right? <laughs> no. Especially what you're saying, like uh, the the motions that you can do with this guy, like he might not be able to get touched. And like you played with a guy like T. Y. Hilton, like, he, he was he was undersized, yeah. but he but he knew what he was doing. And even when we watched like a uh, Tyree Kill, who's obviously stockier, a little bigger, like he knows. Knows exactly when he's supposed to get down and out of bounds. T.Y. Yeah. Hilton got booed his first couple plays. You yeah. know, he'd get the ball, mm-hmm. he'd go down in Indianapolis. So, look at this. You did nothing. You've proved nothing. We have Marvin Harrison here. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> we have Reggie Wayne here. We have tough football players here. And then, like, whenever he's playing game eight, nine, mm-hmm. ten, what? eleven, what? twelve, what? not missing any reps, it's like. 
Oh, hey, wait to hey, wait to avoid the hit. Smart play. That's hey, this guy knows football. <laughs> yeah. It's like a full come circle moment. You got to make the plays, obviously. Mm -hmm. like, T.Y. Hilton was making mm -hmm. all of the massive plays, but he was safe with his body and taking care of himself and avoiding a hit. That's a talent, though. It like, is having that awareness is is a talent. I think that. Obviously, you have to have if you're undersized, and if you don't, you'll be run out of league. You quick. better have it because if you get hit, like let's say it's Vontaze catch you on a slant or, or over route, those are, are, are mad collisions. So he, even guys. even that <laughs> stuff though, like I I know he's not going to be running across the middle too much probably, but like from watching the dynasty and you see these old clips of the way guys used to get hit, and then like now you that's know like, I, you, yeah, that, that's not a thing anymore. Like look at we talked about uh, yesterday Pittman getting folded up against the Steelers. Like yeah, that's a massive hit. That was like, like an old school play. And, yeah. And the Clean guy got and he, and, he, and he got ejected. You know, it's like it's not. It's obviously a 15 yard penalty, but then there's obviously ejection what? behind it. So what did you say? It was an ejection. Oh, it was a clean play. Whenever you slow it down, he. Did, I mean, he tried his best not. And even Mike Mitchell said it. Uh, Colt safety coach. And I think Pittman even said like yeah. football happens. Mm -hmm. yeah, which, by the way, Pittman dog. Mm -hmm. So happy he got tagged mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. But there was things that you wouldn't do back in the day as yeah. a wide receiver. Like I am not leaving my feet. And <laughs> And Correct. looking back at Ooh, the quarterback. No. Now it's very different. I think it's good. Yeah. I think it's good Absolutely. for the humans. Sucks for defense. Yeah. Defense is getting harder and harder. And back to the combine, because of this clip that came out of the new New Heights podcast, which shows electrifying. Yes. yes. Crushing. Two goats at their respective positions in the NFL that's over 100 years old, mm -hmm. talking in their primes pretty much. Mm -hmm. You know, now obviously Kelsey – playing his best football, retiring, though, at the peak. And then you add in the fact that they're humble Ohio dudes yep. mm -hmm. that just, like, love – exactly, dogs, actual football people. It's like a beautiful thing that's taking place. And every time they have an episode, we're obviously pulling and listening and thinking about because – like, not only are they very pop, these two are very good at the football. Yes. Very. <laughs> like, these two are. Filthy. So when they're speaking, you should, like, as a football person, like, maybe listen. Travis Kelsey opened up about the combine meetings a little bit on the New Heights podcast. And these are all just kind of, um, you know, like, uh, celebratory pretty much nowadays. Walk in, what's your name, where are you from? They try to ask gotcha questions. What's your favorite kitchen appliance? Mm. And if somebody says some silverware, it's like, all right. Idiot. This guy's yeah. dumb dumb. This guy's dumb dumb or whatever it is. Like they try to do those things, but now with how much prep everybody has for these meetings and these meetings being around for so long, every question in the history of football has been asked. Pretty much everybody's prepped. Travis Kelsey said, uh, when I came in, it wasn't necessarily like that. I, I had some bad meetings. Listen to this one that he uh, allegedly had with the Dallas Cowboys. At the Combine, I had some bad interviews. The Cowboys, they were kind of pressing me about having this red flag of missing a year. Being suspended for a season? Smoking weed. I don't know if I was having a bad morning. I basically was just, I don't even know if I want to say this. Time out, what'd you say? It ended really fast. I basically just said, if you guys think I'm going to be that kind of guy, or you're questioning if I'm still that person after everything that I've battled through to get to where I am now from missing a season, then you guys probably go somewhere else and pick somebody else. And that is exactly what they yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they absolutely did. The NFL, you know, they will find a way. Uh -huh. you know, if you are a player, they will move on. But I appreciate I think his answer was good, though. Yeah. yeah. And that was probably a prepped answer by Travis Kelsey. His agent probably told him, like, hey, you are going to be asked about missing a year because of a failed weed test or whatever. And I doubt that the Dallas Cowboys necessarily want a different way just because of that or if they had somebody else caught their eye. But isn't it crazy to think that back in the day, if somebody did have a failed weed test, that was <laughs> potentially a reason to not let them in the building. Oh, yeah. We are now at the point in the United States of America that there is 38 states where it is legal somehow. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. Medicinal or recreation. Recreation, 24 states. I'm no mathematist. I didn't get into Harvard. How many states are there? Uh, 50. Well, it's 24 recreation, and then you can count D.C. and Guam, which are not states, right? Correct. Of course. Which I still don't understand how mm -hmm. that happened with the whole D.C. thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, District of Columbia? I mean, just make it its own state. But I don't understand it's how like we even... Just join one of the two. No, no, no. Yeah, but at the beginning, when it started, how did it even... It's the capital. What are you I don't know. About? I'm, we're not... Well, when it to... started, it wasn't the capital, I suppose. No. You know? No, because it was another place. But how did that... And... So how did it... With everything everywhere else doing something, well, why were they just like completely different? Move to D.C. We, I, I, don't, I don't fully understand that, but nonetheless... Recreational, legal mm -hmm. in D.C. Mm -hmm. and Guam. So you would take it to 26, I guess. And it's like how crazy 
time has kind of come full circle on that. Because I assume that would have been a big red flag for a Travis Kelsey coming out into the NFL. This guy failed a marijuana test. Now it's like, are, te- are schools even testing for marijuana anymore? Right. Do we even mm-hmm. hear that schools are testing for marijuana anymore? The NBA no longer testing for marijuana. The NFL has always used marijuana as like a leverage piece in negotiation with the players. Like the players would be like, you know, we... Uh, we want less uh, off-season workouts. You know, we want less because we feel like we're getting beat up, and then we don't want three days anymore. And the owners would be like, "You want weed? Hmm? Oh, yeah, we're, yeah. we're going to get twenty games." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then the union will always say, "We're not going to give up all of that just for marijuana or whatever." Yeah. But it feels like we're nearing a place where marijuana is probably going to get passed federally, you would think somebody with a brain yep. would do that and say, you know what, this is actually pretty good business. We can maybe even ship these things to other countries. It's probably become a booming thing. Yeah. We don't have to worry about, you know, terrible mm-hmm. potential marijuana getting mm-hmm. brought into our country that have fentanyl and killing people. We have scientists actually working on it. There's a lot of data and studies that say that, oh, instead of painkillers, which are obviously killing a lot of my friends, a lot of people around the world, it's like this is potentially something that could benefit that. Like, it's only a matter of time. And I think that's what I took from that Travis Kelsey like kind of story there is a great answer on the thing. I've worked yep. my ass off to do that. I was young. I'm sorry I made a mistake. But also nowadays, if they're like, uh, heard you failed a weed test? Yeah. All right, thank you for being truthful with us. Let's move on. Uh, whenever you did, yeah. like yeah, exactly. it's a wild, it's a wild time. You have your own strain of weed. Yeah. There's a guy named Cheeks in here. Okay, his, name, Cheeks. Cheeks. his name's Cheeks. Cheeks. Go on, Cheeks. Cheeks is his name. And it, I've never met a human named Cheeks. No. But I'll tell you, as soon as you meet a human named Cheeks, the it's a disarmer immediately. Yeah. Yes, it is. Your name's Cheeks? Yeah, it's a great name. Atta baby Cheeks. Yeah. yeah. Cheeks. I'm going to say your name 50,000 times today. What's going on, Cheeks? Massive smile to Oh, me. yeah. Cheeks got the cheek. Great I, I don't know if that's how it started or if it's his last name, whatever the hell the case is. <laughs> but he's in the marijuana industry, and it's like it's, there's only a matter of time before – you know, we're all good. And thank God Andy Reid, when he drafted Travis Kelsey, didn't Ooh. care. Mm-hmm. And thank God that Andy Reid brought Patrick Mahomes in there because watching those two play football together has led to people robbing fuck freaking. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> good catch. Good catch. Good I think, catch. Uh, I don't think the C made uh, it yeah. all the way. Hey, I didn't hear yeah, it. I I think, there's no K. I no think got got that. No K. Yeah, it depends. You got a jumpy umpire on third baseline, maybe. I measured to see actually. I think it yes, was. he did. Yes, he did. I think it was. <laughs> I wonder what Dick. I felt it in yeah. my. Yep. That's why oh, I'm saying no. from a. Okay. Being on the other end. You of know the when slow-mo. you go. You yeah. know when you go. They caught it though. All right. All, right. All right. I did go, though. <laughs> yep. Yep. I did go. That's, fair. That's on me. But people are robbing banks to watch these two play football. And now, hopefully, in the future, you know, not only will the NFL be in a better place because of uh, eliminating a marijuana test, but also, like, the fact that that potentially slowed down a goat. Yeah. You know, because of a mistake that was made mm-hmm. when he was 19, a mistake that was made whenever he was 19 and every other human's doing, is crazy to hear. And that's why that podcast is so phenomenal. It's like just little gems being dropped out of two goats that we can all learn from and move forward with. Yeah, and them being brothers. Like the chemistry, there's no like build to the chemistry. Like right away, it was unbelievable no matter what. And obviously, you know, their their conversations about football is one thing, but even just them talking as brothers and people. Well, that's what I'm saying. Teams. Like th- for people that were like hating Taylor Sw- the Taylor Swift exactly. stuff. Exactly, yeah. It's like you're listening to two goats talk football here mm-hmm. too. Like yeah. that, they have the, the, it is a great weapon. And you saw who... I don't want to make a thing of this, you know. I don't want to make a big deal, but sure. when Jason went off the stage there, first person was his brother. Oh, yeah. You know, and then his, his family there. They are a tight group. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, so tight. And Very rarely stays that way. Jason, too, like, they, they check each other. Like, there was one episode where J- Jason had to get, he had to actually leave the podcast and they had to continue to record it because Travis was just joking with him being on the excuse <laughs> train. And then when the Taylor Swift stuff started, you know, obviously there was all that all that hoopla around it but Jason you know he mentioned like hey you did it to yourself and like they 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 check each other which I mean that's one of my favorite parts of the entire thing but even just like you mentioned like you're listening to two people who know football better than everybody like you're you're the Jason Kelsey is regarded as the greatest center of all time I appreciate that he did a little uh you know in some circles the best center ever, or some mm-hmm. of, one of the best centers ever. Like he acknowledged, I appreciate that he acknowledged it because I assume for a long time, anytime you said that to him, he was ah, because exactly. there's other centers that he's in there. So I appreciate that he acknowledged that. But yes, you're listening to a guy who played 12 years in the NFL as 
regarded as the best in his position. We should listen to that. Yeah, and, and like during the combine week when all those guys were doing interviews, the uh, the actual players who were participating in the combine, it was always like the hey, build your perfect tight end, build your perfect center. If they were interviewing a tight end or a center, and both of them are in every list. Like every single player yeah. is involving those two just because of how good they are. At yeah, congrats to the Kelsey family. Yeah, keep going. You guys got it figured out. Seemingly, mm -hmm. couple of Ohio people, couple mm -hmm. dogs. Combine. Uh, obviously, you get picked at six. Did you do interviews with everybody? Did the you? interviews, yeah. I didn't go past nine though. Like my age was like no, no need to interview nobody that's in the top nine. Players. Rosenhaus did this a uh, couple years ago yeah, with, with uh, Jalen Carter. Carter. Jalen yeah. Carter, the guy they're calling uh, Human Ryan. That's right, mm -hmm. Human Ryan. Hopefully he gets up to his full potential when mm -hmm. he's in the NFL. Because what we saw that first year was phenomenal. Fan Drew Rosenhaus said he's not interviewing anybody past ten. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. And everybody was like, "Don't you think you should?" And Drew said, no. "You think this is my first?" <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary came great. on. Oh yeah. 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 He was like very fired up about people questioning his intelligence for one of his. You think I'm gonna tell one of my clients to do something he's not supposed to do? No. Never. I've been in this game a hundred years. <laughs> did that entire thing. You did the same thing. They be knowing though. They know. Yeah. Like, the agents know everything. They know. They're because here in Indianapolis. Yeah. They know. You have all these conversations. Mm -hmm. You got all the chatter. Actually, one of the conversations that took place in Indianapolis post 2 a.m. was revealed by James Palmer. Ooh. Yeah, now obviously post 2 a.m., law conversation. Sure. Yeah. Always. It shouldn't be, but. Some say nothing good happens after 2 a.m. Yeah. No, I say midnight, midnight is what they've moved to to try to like maybe make people, yeah, maybe one, two hours to think about what exactly maybe is 10 happening. PM. Right. But some cities start later than other cities. They do. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, you got to kind of. Stay open. It's a t I was always really, I didn't fully grasp this statement when I was young. So mm -hmm. that's why I didn't really adhere to it. Mm -hmm. Because I always thought to myself, well, you don't know what the nightlife in this city is like. They don't start till 11 anyway. So now you're doing the math. If it was supposed to start at like 9 or 10-ish, mm -hmm. midnight, so I'm adding two hours. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing good happen for 4 a.m.? Like, yeah. I don't, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I do the entire math of the whole thing. It's tough to make the right decision in that situation for a while until you get arrested for a public intoxication. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. And then you get put in a substance of abuse program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. Divorce. The worst. The worst. And then you get tested eight times a month for 27 months. Mm -hmm. Long time. Long time. Then you got to call and report every time you leave your home. Give them two phone numbers they can reach you and what address you'll be sleeping at because you never know. <laughs> yeah. When they're going to need your piss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a lockout for you. The lockout came <laughs> at the greatest time in the history of the NFL in my eyes. Yes. This is my perspective. Lockout came in the middle of my 27-month substance of abuse program. So there's no testing for however many days it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got to have a good time a little bit. Yeah, got oh, I'll check back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you got to You got to reprieve. Yeah, so nothing good does happen afternoon if you're living it, or after midnight if you're living in a certain way. But after 2 a.m., I think we all understand what those conversations potentially look like, especially if it's a place that's viewed as like an NFL spring break yeah. with a lot of people that know a lot of similar people uh -huh. and a lot of people shit-talking potentially, a what? lot of people. Competitive people, football people, what? boozed up people, what? maybe a Zen or 10, yep. you yeah. know what I mean? Who knows? Oh, maybe yeah. maybe an app uh, that they ordered from like maybe four or five hours ago sure, sitting sure. in there, but it is getting touched. Mott sticks are frozen. Oh, yeah. mm. We're oh, yeah. diving in there. Maybe a little drool, potentially. Mm -hmm. Clean up your mouth. Yep. You know, conversations post 2 a.m. is how this was described from the Denver Broncos live podcast. But I guess there was one particular player hmm. that Boston Connor might have a little bit of interest in. What? Really? That was being chatted about around the bars of Indianapolis. Hmm. This was an, a, a very hot button name in Indianapolis mm. after the mm. hours of 2 o'clock. Mm. Mm. That's when the good stuff yeah, comes out. That's when the goods yep. come out. Um, and I'm, I have no intel to the Broncos to this player, yeah. but this would be an interesting type of comparison to that. Mac Jones. Mm. Uh -oh. <laughs> there are people that coach the quarterback position mm. in Indianapolis that believe if Kyle Shanahan would have legitimately taken Mac with the number three pick, which is kind of what he wanted to do in the first place, and then ended up getting talked out of it uh, because Mac's probably ceiling wasn't very high and Trey Lance's ceiling was through the roof, and yeah. why'd you trade all of this for a guy with a ceiling that's about here? Um, there's multiple guys told me this in Indy. Like, I think if he took Mac at three, they would have won multiple Super Bowls by now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> if Shanahan had Mac Jones, he's got four Super Bowls. Ma Ma what are we even talking about? Mac Mahone. Imagine some drunk ass scout walking over <laughs> to a Niner scout. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, look who it is. Oh, uh, Kyle Shanahan wants Mac Jones. Scouting department doesn't want Mac Jones. Oh. <laughs> uh, you guys messed that one. Oh, wow. Idiot. Two, three Super Bowls, probably. 
<laughs> At least. Can we get a couple shots for a loser? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. That would be a hilarious thought about how it comes to that. But Mac Jones' name, I guess, has not been chatted about. No. Last year, there was trade chatter mm -hmm. about him maybe going to uh, Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, Vegas was one of them with McDaniels. Yeah. Yep. yeah, he was maybe going to Las Vegas, I think, last mm -hmm. offseason. Now the whole question is, are they taking a quarterback at three? I guess at, at first the belief was, yes, they're definitely going to take a quarterback. Yep. Now it's like, well, let's see what it is after all the grades come out. And then the amount of narratives that will change about these first three quarterbacks throughout draft season is going to be maybe 20 to 50 times. Yep. I mean, it'll just go. Yeah. So I don't think any of us will fully know what it, to expect going into the draft. But like Mac Jones potentially traded, mm -hmm. he'll be a member of the. What do you th What do you think is the outcome with Mac Jones, as an avid Mac Jones supporter? Yes. For a time mm -hmm. of your life, yes. Boston Connor. For about two years, I'd say I am a Mac Jones supporter. I think I still would consider myself a Mac Jones supporter. I think the situation will solely depend, obviously, on the draft. I hope they like one or two guys, and obviously not Caleb. I hope they like one of the two others, and they take him at three, and then be moved. There's saying like fifth round pick area is what they're thinking they would get for him but also I just I, I wouldn't rule out him being back in New England because I think if they don't like that ship has not sailed this is a Mason Rudolph potential situation with Mac Jones coming back to New England yeah personally I, I don't I wouldn't rule it. for those that don't know what the Mason Rudolph situation is Mason Rudolph went in, uh, to Pittsburgh mm -hmm. we all remember the beginning of his career because he got bonked in the head yes. mm -hmm. by his own helmet on Thursday night football against Cleveland Browns <laughs> front of Correct. everybody <clears throat> Had his face mask removed. That was a separate well. occasion. Yeah, it, was it was on the Today Show, Good Morning America. Yep. Did you see these barbaric features mm -hmm. from last night on Thursday Night Football? It's assault. Then they do it in like picture form instead of video form, and it's like helmet, helmet. They look good. Top of helmet. Yep. Side of head. Bonk. His face. Like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. It did. Yeah. <laughs> It did. That was back whenever football, you know, was kind of at the tail end of is this sport too physical? <laughs> is it good for the future or not? So, like, boy, everybody hated that that happened in that situation, but things are going to happen. A lot mm -hmm. of uh, tensions, a lot of energy, a lot of emotions. We want people to care adamantly about what they're doing, but then whenever some things cross the line, obviously it's going to be a big deal. Anyways, he did not play great football for the Steelers either during that time. Mm -hmm. So he was, like, kind of hated by Pittsburgh quickly. And by hated, I mean, like, we don't want this jag off as our quarterback or representation <laughs> of the city of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. We need to get this guy the hell out of here. Steelers were sticking behind him, though. Adamant. Oh, yeah. Putting him in. He would not do great. Pittsburgh would say, this guy sucks. Give us Duck. This is Duck Hodges yeah. comes in quark, 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 and does his quark, entire quark, thing. Quark. Shout out to Duck, but he's doing it. Keep going, going, Duck. Proud of you, Duck. Go, Hold. Duck. He's talking about his relationship with Lane Johnson. I, I, I do believe uh, well, as what a lot of people were thinking too. Hey, Doc, you, hey, Doc. Baby Doc. Love you, Doc. Doc. Anyways, Mason Rudolph gets benched uh, inevitably, and they draft a quarterback, and everybody is like, thank God we'll never have to deal with Mason Rudolph again. Like, he was actually getting chanted out of town, out of mm -hmm. everything. And then as the Steelers season went on the way it did with the firing of a coordinator for the first time in – Ever seemingly in Pittsburgh Steelers operation, numerous yeah. quarterbacks. Mason Rudolph comes in and lights it up, yeah. and then the entire city of Pittsburgh was chanting Mason Rudolph's name. Yeah. If Mac Jones comes back and plays good football, mm -hmm. nothing matters. Mm -hmm. No, no, they no. will absolutely love him. But if he comes back and he stinks, right? You guys are probably going to lose your lose oh, your shit. There, there's a lot of people that have already lost their shit. But that's the thing with Mac is that it was the reverse of that, and it is very easy to say Mac Jones stinks. I get that he hasn't played well. Yeah, Mac. Patricia is an offense corner. No offense, Matt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no like, it's it, three different OCs in three different years. But uh, but again, you, you can say he stinks. I'm not going to argue with that. It's it's very easy to say they went four and thirteen. But like, you don't come into the league as a rookie and go ten and seven and go to the playoffs if you're not good at quarterback. Pro Bowl. Like, like uh, forget about the Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl is fake. But so well, he's ready for fifty yards. I was yeah. like, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that was sweet. But I, I just don't think like passing up, just taking a quarterback because of how bad it went, I think is the wrong move when there is a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, last year at the C.J. Stroud Pro Day, all anybody talked about was, yeah, C.J. Stroud's unbelievable, but God, Marvin Harrison Jr., I mean, that is a Lamborghini 
Heaney, and no one can touch it because he isn't eligible yet. Okay. So if you're at three and you don't like the quarterback, take Marvin, and then you roll with Mac for his last year. You're obviously not picking up his fifth-year option. But I could see teams like a Sean Payton where he's like, yeah, I could see some Drew Brees and Mac Jones. Like, I-, I could see Sean Payton thinking that, like, this guy's accurate. You know, he doesn't have that. You know, he's taller than he's Drew. Pickleball. Yeah, he plays yeah. pickleball. Mm-hmm. He-, he likes cookies. I-, I could see something along those lines. He's but a I- dirty player. I yeah, he's dirty. Does he kick dirty people? Player. Dirty yep. player. He is a dirty player, which if he's on your own Doesn't team. He? He it, kicks people yeah. right in. If the- he's on your own team, you don't hate dirty players. And anybody who played, I guarantee both of you had dirty players you played with, but Love I him. bet you loved them. Yeah. Montez. Like that is Love Pack might have been. I mean, Pack's trying to fight you. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, there's like, you never one dirty, though. No, no, not, yeah, you need one of those line. guys on the team. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And if he's on your team, you like him. But yeah. if you if he's not on your team, Ooh. and then if he's on your team and he stinks, all those things start being viewed a different way. Oh, yeah. It's like the Russell Wilson stuff. Like, exactly. When Russell Wilson's winning, everybody loves the Mr. Unlimited, Unlimited. stuff. And then if you stink, this guy sucks. Get yes. him out. Is this yeah. the corniest dude of all time? Yes. Mm-hmm. What is this guy? But if he wins all the way back, like he's probably going to a Minnesota, if Kirk Cousins is going to Atlanta, which Kyle Whoa. Pitts Ooh. has told us that maybe that isn't as signed, sealed, delivered as we potentially believed just yesterday. We had Mike Florio on. Mike Florio, founder of Pro Football Talk, has been covering the NFL forever. Mm-hmm. Rumors, happenings, news, everything. He's been there. ProFootballTalk.com was the home screen of pretty much every person that I've seen in an NFL building for a while. At like, uh, when you walk into somebody's office, it's like normally ProFootballTalk.com mm-hmm. would be on there for the day. Yeah. What are the rumors that are potentially happening through the day? A lot of people obviously use information, I'd assume, mm-hmm. through Pro Football Talk to get out there and things like that. That is the game and the name of the game. Uh, he is not a journalist, he's a lawyer. Ah. He's a lawyer, writer, yeah. blogger. Sure. Okay. West but he, Virginia. Yeah, he is a West Virginia guy. Paisan, mm-hmm. author, everything mm-hmm. like that. So he was basically piecing together that Kirk Cousins was going to Atlanta. Yep. He had heard that there has been credible indications. Right. Mm-hmm. Couldn't that, corroborate it quite yet. Yeah. But no, not that this one. On the, He's talking about going oh, to school down oh, there. Oh, right. Yeah. Her his wife's family's from down there. He's potentially looking at houses, which is maybe to go hang out with the grandparents. Mm-hmm. Would make sense. Uh, but they do need a quarterback. I mean, there's a lot of questionable things just necessarily doing that. But the internet just said, like, okay, he's going there. Then yesterday on the show, whenever he said, he did say that he couldn't corroborate it. Yes. But he also said that, you know, Kirk has already reached out potentially to Kyle Pitts, what he's here. He, he's not 100% sure mm-hmm. what he's hearing. He's already reached out to Kyle Pitts for the jersey uh, number eight. Kyle Pitts responded. Oh, yeah, Kyle Pitts did. put a tweet out and he said, he didn't say anything these days. That's a con. <laughs> he, he just said, this actually is funny. You guys come up with anything. So I assume what Florio will say is, he didn't deny it. Yeah. Nope. He didn't deny it. <laughs> mm-hmm. He right there. But I do appreciate the fact that Mike Florio also mentioned there, I have not confirmed this, but I'm hearing rumblings of, which is always a good little. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Always you can a, say anything you want. Yeah, yeah. you certainly can. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing rumblings, not confirmed. This is this. That's why Florio's been doing it for 35 years or whatever it is. Bingo. But it is fascinating. The Kirk Cousins-Atlanta relationship seems to be, in a lot of people's heads, done, which means the Vikings are looking for a quarterback, and they could potentially get one for $1.21 yes, million dollars in Russell Wilson. Yeah, which would be awesome for that for them. And you know what? I think Kyle did the old, uh, just read the headline there and didn't listen to the two-minute and 22-second uh, clip where Florio did say, about the Kyle Pitts number thing that he could not cooperate it, but he heard it. It's something that could be happening. But you know, I mean, that's that's fine. But Kirk's going to be in Atlanta. So, ooh, like, ooh. here's what Florio actually said yesterday about it. But this is the exact thing we were talking about with these information accruers. Yes. Taking things and mm-hmm. putting it out as their opinion, mm-hmm. but it's being relayed so much like a game of telephone yep. <laughs> as a thing of fact. Now. Florio definitely mentions it. He does. Yes, he yeah. does. Definitely mentions it. Brings it, it yeah. up on his own. And in our eyes, we're like, damn, but he did not. We had to listen to it back because we saw this whole thing going. We saw Kyle Pitts. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Win. Boom. Yeah. Here's what Florio had to say about it. Up to and including, I haven't confirmed this part yet, but Boom. it's just one of those little things <laughs> that makes sense. You know, talking to the guy who currently wears number eight, Kyle Pitts, about getting number mm. eight whoa. before any of this stuff is whoa, done. Whoa, whoa, so, whoa. So, so when you're hearing this, you're just hearing this from people that see, are in I the even... know at the time. Here's what happens. In this case, in this case, and i got to be careful because I can't disclose names, but 
you have very loyal readers of the site who when they find okay. something out however they find go. it out Bingo. they want to share it with you so then you get it and you vet it through people who thing. know and then the end result is holy shit that tip was right holy crap this stuff is happening and so, and that's why you're hated. Sold it. And that's why some people get very mad when Florio potentially gets something. True. Oh, I mean, look, I think people get mad because they don't want bad news about their team. So there's a knee jerk reaction to dismiss anything that you don't want to hear. Valid. Oh, that's valid. But he did say, I can't confirm this up into, and then he did a song and dance about the whole game, and then readers send in stuff, and then he has to confirm it. You're an Atlanta native. Uh, pack, although you call Cincinnati home now because of your time yeah. at the Bengals and everything that you've done there in the community and business-wise and everything like that. Uh, Atlanta would like Kirk Cousins as quarterback or no? I think so, yeah. And they'll probably pay him a guaranteed contract. They're missing a the quarterback. I think yeah. I think they will. Yeah, sure. Arthur Blank was going to pay however much to Deshaun Watson. Remember, he was in the run. 180, whatever it had yeah, to whatever be. It yeah. Whatever it was, 180, 200 that had the Cleveland Browns come in over top of 230 or whatever the end of number actually ended up being. So they've been in the market before for a quarterback in the big time. Kirk Cousins throws the ball all over the place. Yes, he, Kirk can do it. Yeah, has success yeah. everywhere he goes. And I think he's beloved by everybody because he's exactly who he is. Mm -hmm. He's a nerd. Yes. That is what Kirk Cousins is, mm -hmm. and he he addresses it and loves it. I'm excited to watch the whole quarterback carousel take place. Joining us now from a whole other sport. Hell yeah. He's back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a man that we love. A man who played 15 years in the NBA. Absolute stud. Ladies and gentlemen, getting thinner by the moment. <laughs> Kendrick Perkins. Yeah. Hey. How are you, Perk? What's up, Phil? Hey, we appreciate you joining us, man. We enjoy talking to you about the NBA. We don't know a lot, but every time we talk to you, it feels like we come out of it with our own opinions because mm -hmm. they're yours. Hey, 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 Pat, man, it's good to see you. Good to see the fellas. It's been a minute. Hey, y'all ready to get a rock and roll? I'm glad we got that secondary sport out the way. You know what oh. I mean? <laughs> It's time for the voice to play now. What are you talking about? You're talking about, you're talking about pickleball? What, what sport are you? What are you, are you talking about football? Hey, I'm just, hey, you know I had the rough of the felt. Okay, all right, yeah, 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 you know. Hey, the NBA has been doing a fantastic job. Now, the All-Star game stuck. Uh, yes, yes, uh, it, it, it stunk, I think is what everybody said. It wasn't that entertaining. Hopefully that was going to be better. And yeah, I got faith that they'll make it better in the future. Yes, they will. Yeah. 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 yeah, Silver will do it. Yeah, they'll do it, Park, right? That'll get figured out, right? Yeah, I mean Adam, Adam Silver is going to figure it out, right? Like he's been, he's been, I think his ideas and th the way he's been fixing problems has been a blessing for the NBA. So if it's no other person that I trust more, it's Adam Silver. He'll figure it out. But look, it's money. You got to pay money. You got to pay the money. Yeah, the players the money to make them compete. I think that's going to enhance and, and up the competition in the all-star game so i think you got to increase the incentives you know the team win you got to say you know each guy get five hundred thousand. you saw how, how guys went so hard in the end season tournament to make that extra little bag yeah you're right and can't you just get a sponsor to maybe put that up and be the hero that saved the all-star game like I, I there has to be someone yeah. adam silver will fit hey i'm so figure it out oh, God, yeah. Yeah. And these guys are working, by the way. Oh, yeah. So them expecting money while working and being – other people are making money, right? So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and figure this out. Hopefully they'll be able to do it because that could be a spectacular event that does launch into the time of year in which the NBA, alongside the NHL, is king. You know, as this mm -hmm. NFL season kind of wraps up, as you get a call from Adam Silver saying, good idea, Perk. Yeah. That's what Adam <laughs> Silver was just calling uh -huh. you to say there. Hey, so let's talk about this. And it's a basketball convo that's been happening in sports media forever. I have a kind of a different take on it. LeBron James, first player ever to hit 40,000 points. Yep. Way you go, LeBron. Oh, baby, LeBron. Way you go, LeBron. And I grew up in the era of LeBron, so I'm a massive fan. I enjoy everything about the story of LeBron James, where in high school he was being said that he was going to be this guy. Mm -hmm. This is what they were saying about him as a teenager, whenever his brain was nowhere near fully developed, and he was in situations that, you know, are very difficult and was able to navigate them at such a young age, and has kept his ass seemingly... Out of it. Clean. Yeah. Yeah. Out, out of it. He, he said some dumb things I think everybody would acknowledge. Sure. Throughout, but we've watched him literally grow in front of all of us. 
with the expectations of an entire sport and world on his shoulders. I think he's handling it well. Yep. Hey, Braun, way to go. Thanks, hey, you know, this is somebody who's never met you. I want to let you know, watching along through the era, like I think you've handled the pressure better than any human that I've ever seen as LeBron calls Park and tells him, hey, I didn't say anything stupid ever. <laughs> Anyways, let's move <laughs> along here. The conversation has always been LeBron or Jordan, LeBron or Jordan. And then I watched that last dance, and I wasn't a big NBA follower. I grew up in Pittsburgh. We have an NHL team, mm -hmm. so you follow the sport of hockey. I would watch the Lake Show late at night because I couldn't sleep. You know, Kobe Shaq playing, I would enjoy that. But, like, wasn't an avid NBA fan. I watched that last dance. They're not playing the same sport now as they were playing then. Like, mm -hmm. it's two different sports. So anytime people started getting into the debate, is it Jordan or is it LeBron? I was like, well, that is literally... I think they're playing two different sports. I don't think that's the right debate. I think the debate is, is basketball similar enough now to what it was then to actually have a numbers-to-numbers -numbers conversation with each other. And then now there's an uh, internet post going around that's basically from like when Kobe played yep. versus what basketball is now with the amount of space on the floor and how wide open it is. You got guys scoring 70 and 60 mm -hmm. and everything like that. Is the game at a place where it's going to continue to evolve in that particular manner, or do you think it's going to go backwards as we roll forward here? What do you think about basketball, that, like how it's played now versus what it was, and what's going to happen in the future? You know, <clears throat> you know what? It's, it's hard because guys, guys in today's game, you take guys like Jokic, Luka, Joel Embiid, uh, Shea Gillis, Alexander, and they're so skilled. The fucking evolution, right, of the game of basketball offensively. Guys are so skilled now. But you think about the lack of physicality, right? And this is a problem, another problem that I feel like the NBA has to fix, right? Adam Silver has to get right. And that's the actual physicality part of being allowed to actually play defense, right, and not let the refs somewhat dictate the game. Because nowadays, you can't even touch a guy to fight to get over a damn screen. Or you can't even, you know, chuck a guy to try to make a to try to try make a case, you know, to try to stop something. So it's so hard. But I feel like we're in a point of time where it's like this. When you look at Braun, Braun played in two, two eras, to be honest with you. We're talking about 21 years, right? We both came in in 2003 when the game was played at boxes and elbows, when it was a low post type of game, where scores were, at end of the game scores were like, you know, 85 to 89. Like, we played in that in 2003 to about 2008. Like, it was in the fucking trenches. <laughs> but now, but now we're to the point where you have all this spacing and a lot of analytics you know, have, has affected the game for us, you know, the three-point shooting and stuff to that nature. So I agree, Pat. It is a problem that we need to fix. We do have a problem in the NBA, the lack of physicality. And we got to find a way to put that back into the game of basketball. Because I think, like, the All-Star game, and it's the reason why I brought it up, was, like, a great depiction of that. Because I think, like, in football – and. We're not saying that football hasn't figured out either. No, 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 no. But at the, yeah. at the end of the Pro Bowl game when they were going 11-on-11 11 11 with pads, you would see, like, guys' physicality levels, they'd, like, cut them in, like, a, thir a third. It would be, like, a 33% of how physical the person is. Yeah. So if the person's mm -hmm. a very physical person, it's still going to be, like, a third of that, but they're going to be more physical in that Pro Bowl game than somebody who isn't physical. I feel like basketball is probably the same way. Like, hey, in the All-Star game, we're going to go like 40% here. But if you're 100% is what it used to be at third, like, you know, if you're not yeah. physical and then you're cutting out effort and cutting out physicality, you're down at like nothing, which is why that All-Star game becomes it. And I think people enjoy points in offense, but at some point it just gets like, these guys aren't even trying yeah, out nope. here. With right. that being said, is that why – Joker dominates in the playoffs. Is that why, like, the big guys in the physical basketball, whenever we get to the playoffs, are the ones that inevitably are going to win in the end? No, no. Jokic dominates in basketball because he's just a fucking great player. It's, it's no other way around it, right? Like, I watched him the other night when I was down here and they played against the Los Angeles Lakers, and I was sitting up here telling my – I was thinking to myself, I was like, this dude is really one of one. We're talking about a guy that, you know, doesn't play above the rim, that solely 
his game is solely surrounded by his skill set, meaning, the, you know, the way he gets to his spots, you know, the craftiness he has around the basket, his up and unders, his pump fakes, his jump hooks, his passing ability. Like, he's a big fella that's 280 pounds, 7 foot, that could come off of fucking pin down screens. Like, think about that for a oh, second. So, when I when I look at when I look at Jokic and I think about Jokic and how he dominates, it's the mixture of both. He has the physicality and he has the finesse game, which brings it all in one. Yeah, but he's white, Perk. So you had him. Yeah, that too. That too, Pat. Yeah, yeah. That's why you know. Wasn't he the reason? He was the oh, reason. Oh yeah, right? he was the reason. Wasn't Joker favorite. the reason that you were labeled the racist Kendrick Perkins last year? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, yes. That. yes. That was that was the fucking reason. But you know what? You know. You know. You know how you shut me up by going out there and actually getting the job done like he did and actually winning the championship in the finals MVP. Yeah, you're not scared to change your opinion upon further review. No, no, you're a journalist. No, no. there's no yeah. reason. Yeah, you're not. I don't. You, you think I hate this guy because he's whiter than all the whites that I know? No. He's the whitest looking human of all time. No, just to me, I don't know yet. Is what you said, and then they said, "Oh, Perkins knows. God. He knows. He knows." It's uh, it's the whole milk situation. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the Wonder Bread situation. That's what they said immediately upon you saying that. And then now listening to you break down his game, it's like I wonder if any of them are like, maybe Park didn't just hate. Uh, he was a Caucasian. Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe that wasn't the case. Nobody will ever say that though. Nobody. Pat, will ever you know what's crazy with that whole situation, right? Nobody ever talked about how I always praised Jokic and said he was. He's arguably the most skilled big man to ever, skilled center to ever play the game of basketball. Nobody ever said that, right? They just took what they fucking wanted to take out of the MVP conversation and forget whatever else I talked to said great about Jokic. But, you know, that's the world we live in. Yeah, that's a narrative, buddy. That doesn't help the narrative that they wanted to go there. You know what I mean? That, 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 right. And I heard you said that one time, uh, I got a white friend. Uh-huh. Yeah. I heard you say that. <laughs> yep. And that's normally, <laughs> I know Wally yep. that's normally one of the biggest uh, issues. Um, let's move along here. So last night, uh, Kelsey bobblehead night, we actually got them uh, shipped to us. Very cool addition Mm -hmm. to the office uh, at the Cleveland Cavaliers game. And because Travis was there, that means the Swifties were watching. Mm -hmm. And I heard the NBA rigged the game last night for the Cavaliers (laughs) to beat the Celtics. Now, that is what Connor came in and said. They did it, Perk. He's a big-time Celtics fan. They did it. They said the Kelseys were crying all day. We need to give them a smile. So let's make sure (laughs) the Cavs win. That's what they did, Perk. So is Taylor Swift (laughs) having an effect on the NBA now is my question with her power. Or is the Kelseys just such a radiant force that when they're in the building – it is positive vibes in big dubs, Come like on. it has been for the Chiefs what? and like it's been for the Eagles for what? a long time. Yeah. Is that what it is? I, I think it's a I think it's a I think it's a combination of everything. Okay. okay? okay. When, when I say everything, I mean I look at it like this, Pat. It's it's two I always look at the two Ps, okay? That's nice. Popular and powerful. You know, anybody could be popular in today's world, right? But it takes a certain type of individual or individuals to be powerful, <laughs> meaning moving the needle. Okay. You know, Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey, Taylor Swift, they're powerful people. They actually move the fucking needle, no. right? But you, you think about that game last night. I've been saying this since the All-Star break. The playoffs in the NBA has officially started. With the addition of the play-in tournament uh, that I believe has been one of the brightest spots in the NBA over the last, you know, three or four years. But you think about that game last night. You have the Cavaliers who is fighting, you know, to hold on to the number two seed. You got the Boston Celtics Mm -hmm. coming off a, a, you, you know. Yeah, they're fighting. They're in the Cleveland? fight with the Milwaukee Bucks yeah. right now. Yeah. They only hey, where'd it go, off. Cleveland? Wow. 19 and 2. Yeah, they're only, a half a, they're only a half a game out, you know, of the, of the number two spot. So they're trying to hold on to that. And, uh, you know, you, you think about just the intensity level. They was down double figures against a great Boston Celtic team. No Donovan Mitchell. They at the crib, and all of a sudden they come back and get that win. 
Travis does a speech. Of course. Yep. They Jason get, does a speech. Gave him a jersey. Down mm-hmm. 22, is that what it was? In the fourth. Down 22 in the fourth, and then they hit 12 straight shots in the fourth. The Cleveland Cavaliers are some dogs. What other teams should we be looking at? Obviously, I saw the Celtics win by 50. Yeah, Celtics have won three games by 50 this year. First yeah. team ever in yeah. NBA history. Okay, so the Celtics are going to be good, obviously. Uh, on the other yes, The Celtics, look, the Celtics should be the favorite to represent the Eastern Conference. How about the whole like, thing? How about the whole thing? Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go there for. Okay, I wouldn't go there for. They are in the weaker conference, yeah. but I will say this: they should make it to the NBA Finals. But when you go to that West, this is what I want y'all to start locking in at. I don't even want to get into the conversation of who's going to represent the West, but I will say this: the playoffs really have started for the Western Conference. Every single game that you see. That involves the Pelicans, the Suns, the Kings, the Mavs, the Lakers, and Golden State Mm -hmm. is playoff. It's like now or never because all of these teams are fighting to get into the actual playoffs or stay into the playoffs and get out of the play-in tournament. And then when you look at the top of the Western Conference, you have those three teams, the Timberwolves, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and the Denver Nuggets all battling to get that number one spot so that they can have home court advantage throughout the postseason. I'm telling you, this look, I'm, I, re- I really believe, I strongly believe that this is going to be one of the best postseasons that we've ever seen. Okay, oh, yeah. Wemby, I, hey. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, Wemby's not going to make it, but the uh, <laughs> the entire sell that you just gave <laughs> is phenomenal right there. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I am, I'm pumped. Back every up. single game is a playoff game for every team that we pretty much get to watch every single night. Yep. Seems Huge. like, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, it's incredible. I like that the Pelicans are in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like the, I like the Zion. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be yeah. dancing. Oh, yeah. I like that he's playing. I think he's right. We're yep. all good. Mm-hmm. Zion, all clear. So tell we're not. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw some evil tweets so over the break. From who? I just saw someone that said that he was going to be out for the game because he got a brain freeze from Dairy Queen. That's what someone that's, tweeted, that's, and I didn't uh, like that. I didn't like that. that. Yes, that they did. Yes, they did. I'll pull up the tweet right now. I will send it to Zito right now. It was messed up. I actually didn't but, even like the tweet. You mute. Well, I'm happy to like it, you yes. think? I mean, what, you should have muted the person that sent them and said, I don't want to see this person I'll never again. see him again because I talked to my phone. I said, hey, don't show me this again. Okay, they have smart, smart phones. Figure that yeah. out. Yep. But I'm, I'm glad I'm glad y'all brought up Zion Williamson because wow. the Pelicans are actually my sleeper team of coming out of the Western Conference. The Pelicans? Whoa! The Pelicans. They're my sleeper. They're not my favorite. They're my sleeper team to come out of the Western Conference. Okay. This team, this team doesn't get talked about enough. But like my grandmother used to say, they got old souls, baby. They may be young, but they got old souls, baby. And when I think about the depth that they have at the wing position, which is, by the way, in my opinion, the most important position in the NBA, they have great depth. They're led by Trey. Uh, I got Trey Murphy. He is phenomenal. Phenomenal at that wing spot. I think Zion playing all season is good for the NBA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. Zion yeah, sure. in the playoffs is good for the NBA. Yeah. I also like the fact that Zion isn't getting caught up in any, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Not, not Feels yeah. like we're, yep. yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. New yep. leaf. Yeah. yeah. Straight yes. and narrow. Everything. Yep. Yep. Bad baby Zion. Keep going, Zion. Proud of him. That's development. Yeah. Hey, he's in the public eye. He's mm-hmm. been dunking since he's 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now he's playing the Pelicans. He may sleep with team. Doesn't mean they're going to happen. Yeah. But if it was to happen, just know that I told you earlier, you guys are sleeping on mm-hmm. a team. <laughs> Speaking of a team that's at, I was looking at that. Li- the Spurs wait bottom right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Spurs are bottom right there. Connor's got a question for you, Perk. Yeah, big Perk. Obviously, you know, when Banyama is an absolute spectacle to watch. And, you know, the things that he has been doing is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And last night he had a tough night. Okay, that, that's going to happen sometimes to Wembanyama. But what do you think kind of the projection for him is going forward? Because like Pat just mentioned, they are one of, if not the worst team in the NBA. Do you think after this year, you know, this will be kind of like a, hey, let's throw a lot of this out the door and just make sure that Wemby knows that he's going to get 30 shots a game going forward? Or how do you see that progression? And do you think guys will actually want to go to San Antonio to play for Popovich and play with Wemby? Well, well, guys do want to go to San Antonio, and and we have to remember that Damian Lillard 
actually has San Antonio on his list because of Victor Wembanyama. And look, I know a lot of trolls out there got in their feelings about some things I said on NBA Today what? about the Spurs being on the clock, but it's the truth. Because okay. let me tell you something. Victor Wembanyama, I strongly believe, in the next three years is going to be the best player in the NBA on both ends of the floor. Let's That's go, Wemby! Let's go. I offensive, see him. Hey, this offensive thing from last week, night, week. he swats, takes it down, shakes, step back. Yep. I mean, it's phenomenal. Yeah. But look, He's leading the league in blocks right now, and he's still getting adjusted to the NBA game. But here's what here's what I will say. Damn. This young man, he wants to win, and he wants to win now. And so you got to respect that. And for, when you look at Greg Popovich and you look at the San Antonio Spurs, look at what Wimby is playing with right now. I mean, to be honest with you, we could go out there and play alongside Wimby and have the same record right now. Okay. They have to upgrade. They have to upgrade the personnel around this young man. And look, he has made this an attractive place. It is eye eye candy to a lot of young stars and superstars that will want to go play alongside of him. Hey, San Antonio, I was just down there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful city. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Great people. Passionate group of people. And we were going to ask a couple more questions, but we're coming up on a hard out. So we'd like to take this time to have a little celebration. Perk. You dropped seven F bombs on ESPN. That's yeah, the most. Go, that's the most in our show's history. I assume ESPN history. Oh, for yeah. sure. I assume in the history of the network, Perk. You just hey, wait, hey, way to go, Perk. Yeah. Set the bar, Perk. Hey, 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 hey. That is set the bar high. Almost high. struck out the side. Seven is a lot. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah he did. Hey, way to go, Perk. We appreciate the hell out of you, buddy. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all, man. Looking forward to talking y'all, to y'all guys again. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Kendrick Parker. Yeah. Seven. That was Seven. incredible. Seven of them. You could feel them coming. You could. Towards yeah. The end. You could. Yeah, you knew. So I think what happens, obviously, first two hours, we don't say that. There's a couple words that have literally been contractually agreed to and not mm-hmm. to say during. And if it does, it will get muted. Everything else wide open. Here we yeah. go. Mm-hmm. Hilarious in, uh, negotiation. <laughs> had to be the first anybody has ever had, but then making cases for words mm-hmm. and then showing right. examples in which they could potentially be used and how we need that. I can't not mm-hmm. have that. Mm-hmm. Really that has a, we have to have, the soul of the show has to remain. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and I'll give up. Okay. That's the word we enjoy. Yep. Well, we won't say it. It's the greatest word of all time. For sure. Best. But we won't say it. Perk just coming in and dropping seven of them is maybe Sick. the greatest thing I've awesome. ever watched. Yeah, he doesn't care. Does, awesome. Just lets it eat. I think what happens is a lot of people see our third hour. Yeah. Yeah. And then they see clips. Mm-hmm. Third hour just on YouTube, ESPN Plus, TikTok as well. Whatever, see, you, want. Later, whatever yep. you want to say. I get some messages from people that don't know that I think they're potentially watching on ESPN Plus, and then as soon as we're off on ESPN, is somebody lets a buzzsaw off. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, 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 my kids were just. What are we? So we will delay <laughs> a little bit more. We will okay, delay. Okay. We will allow. 205. Yeah, the delay to take place because that is very valid. I can sure. Mm-hmm. Because he people do watch on ESPN Plus, but Perk, that's every single interview we've had with him. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. he has done it. He that's, rips it. Yeah, he's the man. It did help though a couple different times. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he needed he needed it. Good and good and fastest. Yeah, drove it home with Jokic. Point would not be proven if he didn't say it. Nope. How about the Cavs are good? <laughs> they are good. They I did not know that. T Wolves are the yeah. one seed. Yeah. Are you kidding oh, me? Yeah. What? Dude? Okay, okay, see. Eighteen games last. T Wolves. Okay, see. Yeah. Every game's a playoff game for like 10 of the Western teams. Let's go. Playing is going to be biblical. Hey, yes. NBA's doing it. Let's yeah. go. Come on, NBA. Let's All go, right. Brian. Hour two on the other side with AJ Hawk. Pac Man will remain in the boys. We'll see you then. Goodbye. In an abandoned warehouse, Arthur Isaac Fischel, the world's AI authority, has summoned the Earth's most influential doofuses for an emergency meeting about the terrifying powers of artificial intelligence. Antonio Margarita, influencer from Italy. Vladimir Borobershnikovsky. Chad Speed. Jim. We catch up with them mid-dinner as Artie Fish tries his damnedest to get the influencer's attention. Yes, uh, that'll work. Thank you. Scram. Let's get down to brass tacks, boys. The real reason we're here. AI, 
is uh, it's a problem. It's going to kill us all. It's hard to take you serious with the way your face looks right now. I mean, you look like a fucking asshole. What are, you, what are you talking about? Oh, the only thing artificial is those fucking balls you call balls. You look absolutely absurd. You guys don't understand. You're not listening to me, okay? I'm wearing this because AI can hear your thoughts. It can get into your brain, guys. You ain't got no fucking brain. Once again, struggling to take anything you say serious. My team told me I should come to this. You look like a joke. You look like a joke. Like an absolute jerk off. Does this look like a joke? Huh? That's a nuclear bomb. Nah, that's fake. Just Fucking like Batman puts marbles in plastic you need case. A, you need a goo mom, my friend. You guys aren't listening. This right here, AI gave to me a nuclear freaking bomb. It's so good. Told me the only way to save this screwed up world is to blow it up. This guy awake? Idiot. Wake up, that's why. Right. He wouldn't hit somebody with a nuclear No, yeah, fuck No, that. don't you worry. This one is foolproof. I doubt it. I brought it here, boys. Not just for show. What? But because I'm gonna blow up the world right now! Holy shit! That's, That's Jack that Carr! Turns out, that was an actual nuclear bomb. Arthur Isaac Fischel was gonna blow the entire world up, and Jack Carr saved us all. It was his actual first shot, and Artie Fish is actually dead. Forever. Thank the Lord that Jack Carr sensed trouble. Hell yeah, Jack Carr. Hell yeah. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, Ooh. you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice it could change their life. Hello, beautiful people! And welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Big Sports Wednesday, March 6th, 2024. Hour two of the program starts now. Sports are amazing, and we're talking about all of them. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt with an incredibly fly shirt on your chest, Con Man. Today might be the best Boston Connor day I've ever seen. Wow. And this is coming just a couple of days removed from the worst Boston Connor day I've ever seen when you debuted that brand new tattoo and had your arm looking like an 85 year old grandma's. I still, I think, I think I've kind of built some definition over these last two oh, days. Yeah, a lot of wiggle and jiggle team, there, but the I'll tattoo is awesome. Uh, we'll like to let you know. Ty Schmidt, whenever we're talking about Mac Jones and all this other stuff in the first hour, are you just thanking your football gods and your lucky stars about Jordan Love being a home run? Yeah, absolutely. And just wait. I mean, we talked. You're out of this conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Don't have to worry about it at all. Now, everything in the draft, everything in my brain, my brain power is, hey, Packers need to go out and draft Cooper DeGene in the first round. Need to get him. Have to get him. I If they don't get him, I will be incredibly disappointed. Will Compton broke the news that Cooper DeGene was not going to work out at the Combine because yep. he was scared to display a potential whiteness that was not seen in the past and maybe drop him in some draft boards. Yeah, absolutely not. He is a freak athlete. I think if anything, he would have if he would have been at the Combine, I think he would have improved his stock immensely. Broke his leg. That's why he uh, oh, ended yeah. last year early. So I believe he is going to be doing stuff at Iowa's Pro Day, but seen a lot of mocks that have him slotted going to the Packers. I mean, if that happens, I tell you what, I, 
my head will explode on draft. You night. would yeah. actually. Oh yeah, I'd, Mad Mel Kuyper's brain. Yeah, in, and in my pants, I would. I mean, it would like be, Michael Cole with those antlers. Yeah, Bingo, nice. exactly. On live TV, boyhood dream come true. Same situation. So that's that's all. I'm I'm just laser focused, tractor beam on that until draft night. One half of the hammer. Don Cowboys tongue digs. What are you gambling on right now on Hammer Don? Uh, NBA, NHL, college basketball, right. footy, um, golf. Jeez. Uh, spring training. Those are those are spring training. No, we're gonna wait till opening day, which is in a couple weeks. But you just heard the sounds of a man who maybe has a little bit of a well, an issue with this stuff. One eight hundred. You should only be gambling on the things that you know. Mm -hmm. You should only be spending your money thinking that you're potentially gonna lose it. You gotta be smart. You can't be dumb. With that being said. The boys got a good eye on these books. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which sport are we really picking them apart right now? Oh, me is more of a golf. Gumpy has is just locked in on CBB. Uh, the NHL has been tearing me apart. Who's a school there. that I've never heard of that you've profited from uh, this particular college basketball season, Gumpy? Chicago State, Chattanooga actually, once again, is a moneymaker, as they always are. Chicago State and Chattanooga, or Chicago State, Chattanooga? Is that one two, school? Two squads there. Chattanooga okay. is always a moneymaker. They are uh, they're a cover machine. Yeah, the books never give them any respect. No, we're coming up on conference tourney time so you're finding out who the actual uh, big teams are right now uh, yeah but you are a human because the books can only you know they only have so many eyes mm -hmm. now there's so many algorithms and uh, obviously you can pump it in and that'll give you a, a feel but if you're stealing a point or two from the book oh baby on these chicago state games because they potentially don't have enough eyes to cover all the college basketball thing you can make you can profit, and Gumpy has. Oh, See yeah. that brand new chain he's got wrapped around oh, his neck? Oh, yeah. we, got, we got Europa League tomorrow, too. Ain't nobody looking at those lines. Yeah, nobody's watching this. <laughs> uh -uh. Yeah, we're diving in. Hey, Gumps, we appreciate you. Hey, Good yeah. work in the back, boys. We also are joined by NFL legend, West Virginia Mountaineer legend, and a currently signed rapper yep. who's about to launch his second song here. In, has that been announced? March 15th. March 15th. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Pac-Man Jones. Yeah, Pac-Man, Pac I'm excited for March 15th, standing on business, coming out. It's a banger. SLB. It is a banger. It is, uh, the sample's good, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everything's great. Feels like you're going to do this, right? Yeah, we are. We're going to do it. You have a studio in the house. Yeah, downstairs. Put up my own studio. Um, I took out one of the, uh, how, how should I say it? One of my theater uh, sure. roles. Of course, yeah. Made Diggs, Diggs yeah. took out yeah. one of his Yeah, we always, yeah, yep. we understand. Yeah, you always move one of your theaters. You have to. Yeah, you get one of your other theaters to take Smart. care of what this yeah. theater's doing yep. here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead yeah. and get the booth in there. <laughs> yep. uh, I saw some big news about Junior. Yeah. Chris Henry Jr., obviously, uh, you're one of, I guess, the best friend of Chris Henry Sr., Slim, West Virginia Mountaineer legend who passed away. You took on his entire family, pretty much, into your family. Chris Henry Jr. happens to be six foot six, runs a 4'4", 200-some pounds. Jeez. Could go uh, to college, play basketball, once be a wide receiver, though, because yeah. obviously, you know, mm -hmm. he's, it's in his family. He just He's transferring to where? Yeah, modern day. Um, who? We had modern, matter day. Modern day. Matter day? Modern day. Modern day? Modern day. What is that? Modern? Uh, matter day? Modern day. Private school out that's in a, Cali. Okay, yeah, that's modern a, day. Is a, yeah. That's a big one. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. like your... Like you got, IMG. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it used to be that like is IMG, IMG out yeah. west. Yeah. yeah. It's the best of the best. Um, I think he, he reached the height of... He's done puke. I mean, what's the word I should say? He have peaked. In Cincinnati, Eclipse. with Coach Jones being gone, um, it just didn't make sense. So, the better situation, playing against the best talent that you can possibly play against. So, make him better. Yeah, make mm -hmm. him better, good culture. And they're they the number one team in the nation right now, too. Okay, so he's he's got to work at He's got everything. Oh, yeah, he got to work at You're he's excited to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Dog. Dog. Are you? But basketball, I mean. Are you worried that uh, California football is soft? And send him out there. It's gonna. Um, they California. What they didn't want to tackle football. Is that yeah, what was happening? I saw that on the internet. National schedule. Did you I see think that? It yeah, I think it was something like that. They were trying to or certain divisions or whatever were trying to eliminate it. I forget. I forget exactly how. I read it. I scroll. I saw it, and I was like, I'm, I don't even want to hear about this. Yeah, come mm -hmm. on. I don't even well, hear about what this. What a joke. I thought that's what seven oh seven for. Yeah, that's not. That's not tackle football. Yeah. All right. Boom. We got not tackle football. We already got that. Now, if they're saying for like five year olds, where it's like, okay, sure, makes if, sense. If that makes sure. that makes sense, but like, come on, football's good. Yeah, team sports are good. Things are. We need more of that, yes. not less of that. Now, there are some videos that hit the internet of coaches that have no idea how to run drills, mm -hmm. and there are some drills that we certainly need to ban and outlaw, and we're probably not good for anybody that's a part of it. But like, sports are a good thing, you know. 
that, that learning discipline, accountability, working while tired, what? how to fit in, how to deal with people, mm -hmm. you know, how to continue to go whenever you just lost. It's like we need more sports, mm -hmm. not less sports. Yeah. But I'm happy to hear that about Junior, man. And we see some basketball highlights of him. My yeah. God. Is he going somewhere to play both? Uh, he don't want to play both. Oh, Pat, we, we already tell had him to, to play both. Think about we it. We already had to talk, Pat. Dude, he, we're talking six, what, six, six, right? Yeah. Wiggle, just, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then through the rack, to the rack, through the lane, and then just jog. Not ridiculous afterwards, too, just casual yeah. jog mm -hmm. back. It's like, he knows there's not a lot of humans built like, he knows that, right? Yeah. Okay, good. He does whatever the hell he wants. Mm -hmm. Congrats to him, congrats to you. Congrats. Can't wait to watch that whole house. Yeah. Think about basketball. Pac-Man Jones has an entire house. Yep. There's going to be like eight D1 His daughter athletes. just won athlete oh, yeah. of the year. So. Yeah, my daughter going to Mississippi State. Boom. boom, boom. Track scholarship, full boom. ride. Got man. a nice little NIL deal, too. It, really? Shout out to Zanaya, man. Yeah, shout out to yeah. NIL, too. Yeah. 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 Shout out to NIL. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out to you, too, taking on the responsibility, you and Tish. Yeah. A lot of people. You know, that doesn't get talked about much mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things. But I assume whenever all of them are professionals in their level, they say, how'd you get here? It's like. Uh, there was this one particular universal signed rapper, mm -hmm. <laughs> former professional football player, comes from a place that not a lot of people make it out of, who showed us the way. Even though he made some mistakes, showed us the way, showed us the work ethic and everything. You should be proud of that. Yeah, yeah, Pat. Pat. Just proud. And I assume yes, Junior's sir. pumped about it. Going to Mount Mott, Mount Mott. Mott, 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 Mott. Joining us now is a man who is, uh, you know, a guy who probably heard about football being eliminated, tackle football being eliminated from places to say, well, how how's life even work, it, if that's you. the case? Join us now, was. college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup winner, absolute stud, ladies and gentlemen, Adrian Hawk. Yeah, oh. AJ, we need more sports playing, not less sports playing in the world, AJ. Yeah, we do. And I, I thought, yeah, I, I believe somewhere in California they were trying to put it to a vote to, to ban tackle football or contact or whatever, but can't you just, if you don't want to play tackle football, just don't have your kid play tackle football, right? Have him play flag yes. football and let the other people play tackle. No, you got to remember, if you don't like something, though, you need to eliminate it completely, not just stay away from it. That's 2024. Mm -hmm. I think, don't you think a lot of people that want to ban something like that probably don't know a whole lot about what goes on on the mm -hmm. practice field mm -hmm. and the game field? No, they've certainly looked into both sides of it. They understand it completely. They have heard all the benefits and pros and all the stories of people telling about lives being saved and transformed. They heard all that. They just, with their big brains, have decided we don't think this should be an option for anybody because we care about the world more than everybody else does. Mm -hmm. yep. That's what it is, AJ. Yep. I guess this, yeah, we are we are better people than you. That's what they are telling don't us. Don't you eat? We, we are, are better people we than are you. Just, son of a yeah, bitch. Oh, right. AJ, don't you eat? We're even. just dumb cavemen, I thought, right? Aren't we just dumb meathead cavemen? You, hey, you just started doing politics there, and I don't like it. <laughs> yep, don't do it. I don't, I don't like what you Frick. say. I don't, because everybody knows that when yeah, you're in politics, mm -hmm. whoever's talking is a much better person than the other person yeah. they're talking. Every <laughs> single time, no matter what. Well, let me explain to you why I'm a better person than this person. Mm -hmm. right? Why is that? I don't even think football should exist. Whoa. Whoa. Are you sure that's the statement you want to make? Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the studies of what happens to some of these football players as they hop on a high horse? <laughs> Have you seen the movie with CTE, Will Smith, who's a doctor out of South Africa? Nobody should be able to play that game. Is that how we want American citizens' lives to go? In a van underneath a bridge? You can't remember anything? That is why I'm a better human than you are, and the game should be banned completely. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that you see it the same way that I do, and you're a hero alongside me. Of course. That's how it goes, AJ. Yep, yep that, is, that is how it goes, and we are in election season now for a while, so we will see plenty of it. Done deal. Oh, so much. So pumped. Yeah. Think about all the barns right now that are being loaded with high oh, horses. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The high horse barns are just <laughs> out of It's like Christmas tree season is, at the yeah. Christmas tree park. Exactly. Hey, how can I get one of those high horses? Yep. I need the highest one of all time. Mm -hmm. I need the one that's going to ride me right into I'm a better human than you are. Absolutely <laughs> everything. Well, yep. That's what I need. That's what they're doing right now, going yeah. stable to stable. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. Who well, has well, the highest horse of them all? Well, we know. <laughs> 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 Not even getting into that. AJ. Some big news. Kyle Pitts basically laughed in Mike Florio's face yesterday after mm. not listening to the clip, but hearing, <laughs> reading potentially what it was said. And Florio's certainly doing this, too. Oh, he yeah. Knows, yeah. Oh, yeah. He knows exactly yeah. what he's doing in the entire thing. This actually is funny. You guys come up with anything. So uh, all eyes are on Kirk Cousins potentially going to Atlanta. 
We got a text message in the middle of the show. Ooh, whoa. From an Italian man. Hmm. Okay. Coach for 36 years in football. Yep, okay. that's right. There's it down. 18 in college, 18 in the NFL. I think I know okay. who it is now. It's currently, okay. I don't know if it's edibles or drinking on vacation. So we crushing. Very active. Yep. Yep. Tan. Thumbs are very active, very tanned right mm -hmm. now. I think he's living a good life. Mm hmm. He says, Kirk Cousins to Atlanta makes most sense because new OC in Atlanta is Zach Robinson, who, oh, by the way, is from same offensive system as KOC in Rams mm -hmm. mm. and McVay. Mm -hmm. That isn't even something that we have put into the conversation at all. That it, it All roads are leading there. For, is that what we're thinking right now? I mean, I don't know. Because like now that this has not been disputed completely, because Pitts just said that number conversation didn't happen, and Florio also obviously said he doesn't know if that happened. But the, I, I still go back to the Fields video over break that we kind of – you know, all saw that his manager put out of him jumping up and down in his kitchen saying, I'm going home. Like, that still feels like well, something. Home is Pittsburgh, okay? But I, 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 I try to, Justin Fields? Yeah, I try to explain. For, no, because I guess okay. what I, I got, I read a tweet while I was taking a leak in between uh, commercial break there, which we took today. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. We didn't this take a break did. yesterday because Bill Burr still had some stuff to say. Exactly. About the sure. lying, stupid Colts. Mm -hmm. Gotta love it. I watched that video back. Chase Louise, he has some real. Oh, it was yeah. fun. Pent up. Now you know why. See, this is the only team we could hate for this long was the Colts because they're the only team worth a shit because we respected the Steelers and the Colts were just Thank these we stupid, you. like, things that were good. Okay. Yeah, Peyton no. Manning was on this particular team and uh, you yeah. know, they were ending up going up there and all that type of stuff. But as I was reading uh, while I was going to the bathroom in there, they said everybody has Russell Wilson going to Pittsburgh or New England. You guys are the only ones talking about him landing in Minnesota. Why am I doing that? Why why has that just become the thing in my head, you think, A.J. Hawk? I mean, it feels like it, it makes sense for Russ to be there. Now, I don't know exactly. What, does Russ have any kind of connections with anyone on staff in Minnesota? Has he worked with anybody before at one of his other God. stops? Hmm. Well, Jesus hmm. Christ oh, yeah. is in there. Yeah, yeah. You are well, closer. It's, it's a guaranteed <laughs> starting job, I think, is the biggest thing with Russ yeah. to the Vikings. Yeah. I think Russ wants to be a st guaranteed a starting job. Who would sign him to be? Who would sign him to compete for a gig, though? Well, allegedly mm. the report was yeah. the Pittsburgh Steelers said may be interested, but he would be competing with Kenny Pickett. Mm -hmm. Tone Diggs though supports Kenny Pickett. I think I do, uh, especially with the new offense. You you kind of first rounder, good guy, can have a drink. With yeah, him. everybody has. Well, and I, I think that is something that people do say about him is that he is a good guy. But like, I guess a lot of people are pinning him in Pittsburgh. You just said Justin Fields is coming to Pittsburgh. There is that where your mind's at? Well, or? I I was trying to explain the coming home video. Sure. Because what country are you? Do you live in? Born in? United States, United of, States America. of America. United States of America. United States of America. United States of America. This country was forged and built on steel. Okay, mm -hmm. and steel was bought, built, and forged in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Ipso facto, everybody's home in America is Pittsburgh. Wow. So oh that's when you're just, right. We're that's why. Stage. That's why the NFL <laughs> pitched the Rooney family America's team. on America's team mm -hmm. first before yep. it was pitched to the Dallas steel. Cowboys because steel is everywhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. Steel is here, and all the injuries that worked in the steel mills, mm -hmm. they've all moved to all the other steel Bingo. mills. Yep. So you guys are America's team, and the Rooney family said, we're Pittsburgh's team. But, but that's <laughs> okay. We're not America's team. Jerry Jones said, that, that sounds good. I'll get the most profitable organization yeah. <laughs> in all of sports. I guess I'll take that tagline and run with that thing forever. But you, you are making – uh, stories in your head to like any quarterback that comes to Pittsburgh? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, right? if I put out uh, feelers now or that I don't mind any quarterback or what happens it, then when it comes time in the fall, I could say I was always on this quarterback side. Okay, so you have a clip somewhere. Yeah. Saved in the chamber. Yeah. You say, remember, it was March 6th, Wednesday, where we had Pac-Man was back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is before he even released Stand on Business, That's which right. changed the trajectory of Bingo. his entire <laughs> rap career. Mm -hmm. I was saying, Just Justin Fields of Pittsburgh. Yeah. yeah. Love oh. Justin, Justin Fields in the story. Baker Mayfield's in the story. Yep. Kirk Cousins is in the story. Russell Wilson's in the story. Yep. Caleb Williams is in the story. Mm -hmm. Jaden Daniels is in the story. Matt what? Jones now, maybe. Yep. Mac Jones, potentially in the story. If you're listening to 2.30 a.m. conversations that are taking place around Indianapolis bars during Combine. Who doesn't? Is in the story. Uh, Michael Penix is yeah, in, yeah. in, yeah. in the story all of a sudden. JJ McCarthy. Yeah. JJ it's, McCarthy. it's like, it, it's very, how many spots are there? You know? Not that, many. It, yeah, how Not many, that many. So whenever you whenever you think wow. about Russell Wilson, 
Baker Mayfield. Not, I don't. I assume your thoughts on Baker are the way they are. He had a great year last year. He did. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, hey, he did. hey, Baker, way to go. Seem to find himself playing his best football last year. I'm assuming he's very excited. Everybody's saying Tampa's trying to keep him. He's going to be a Buccaneer. New England Patriots with Mac Jones, seemingly potential quarterback situation. Pittsburgh Steelers, Kenny Pickett's coming back. He's the starter going in there, but people think quarterback situation. Yes. Denver Broncos, everybody's thinking now, obviously quarterback situation. Mm -hmm. Las Vegas Raiders, quarterback mm -hmm. situation. Chicago Bears, obviously, with it, quarterback situation. It's like, there's a Throw lot Jimmy of... G in there. Yeah, Throw, what's that? Throw Jimmy G in there when you mentioned yeah. the Raiders. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. Jimmy G. Yeah, he's but out there, right? There, how many spots, you know, somebody's going to miss out. Russ to the Raiders. Yeah, stuff, somebody's sure. definitely going to miss out. You, you talk about Justin Field, you go back and say, what do Chicago want for Justin Field? No one is giving Chicago a one for Justin Field. Yeah. That's so right. you think about it, all right, so what's fair, I guess... Uh, Two originally, but they're saying it's it's less than that. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Because the market, because Russell Wilson, yeah. exactly. Cut, mm -hmm. like, yeah. So now Justin Fields, it's like a four. He's being compared to <sighs> the rest of the market that's yeah. out there right now, plus the rookies yeah. in there. Yeah. So like Justin Fields being compared to two different complete markets. AJ, what you say there, dude? What about Russ to the Raiders? Why haven't we mentioned that at all? I think the reason why, and I mentioned this yesterday to Lombo, um, like the Raiders feel like they're trying to get back to the Raider way. Mm -hmm. And I, for some reason, I just I don't know if Russ is a but Russ is a talent. Yeah, Russ, yeah. If you yeah. go in there and win, who cares? You know, I guess he's affordable. Yeah, he's affordable, and you could count on him at least for two years, don't you think? And he'll show up. Yeah, yeah. You know, he'll show he'll up every there. single day. He'll be a good leader. They were one of the original teams when he left Seattle that he put on his list. And I know it, like it's not, but like the Sierra connection residency. with this, yeah, like a Vegas residency. Like I think that was initially pitch it's like okay well she would be on board with like moving their family there and everything as what well. are some of Sierra's <laughs> songs what are some of Sierra's songs uh, I'd know them if I heard them I couldn't loosen name the let me see you She's one a, two step oh, yeah, 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 there it is got some hips man yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, no, they smoking cigars in 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 in, in. In Vegas, I don't know if he fit that one. <laughs> but uh, but he's smoking big cigars. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like the Raider, I don't know. Like Raider way, I don't think Russell Wilson immediately. But personally, it could be revenge Russ. Like, what if he just yeah. does a 180 yep. and he just says, oh, "You know would. what? Heal Russ. I'm going to be the baddest mother <laughs> what if, in this what if, entire." Yeah. Movie. If he does come walk. What if there's like a full on? Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, pissed. He's yeah. wearing like cut off now. Shirt, yeah. His, his team three social media assistant manager puts a video out of him walking next to his Bentley oh, Rolls yeah. Royce. You know? Hollywood <laughs> Hogan painted on beers, yeah. sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. they give a PowerPoint on like Roman Reigns and the bloodline. Like, hey, this is what we're thinking for your next season. <laughs> Revenge, Russ. Yes. Just like how The Rock had a 21 minute promo. Wait, yep. Do you think where he, he said fudge your story yeah. mm -hmm. to Cody Rhodes? Yeah. Russell Wilson walks out of that house, <laughs> does his thing, and goes up to the camera and goes, Fudge Sean Payton. Yeah. Oh, my God. Connor kind of oh. suggested that Team 3 is pitching oh. Russ on, on pitch decks where his next location should be and what the storyline in his character should be at that location. Agreed. He's a yeah. movie character. Yeah. Revenge Russ is not a bad chapter. Yep, exactly. Not at all. And he can still, he can still go to Minnesota. And what if he comes Russ? out with an action? What if he's featured... Pack, would you put him on? Yeah, no. please. Yeah. Well, yeah, come on. Pack, put Russell Wilson on the song. No, Remix He's on not, SOB. You know, SOB. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Let him, on, let him uh, on stand on business. St standing on like a wax figure of Sean Payton, oh. Russell Wilson. No, Russ, what Russ would do is if it, was, it would actually be the words business spelled out. Like yeah. 15 feet Boom. tall. Yep. Yeah. Boom. Business. And he would just be walking across the top. Mm -hmm. Massive letter. <laughs> yeah. And standing there, man. walking on business. Mm -hmm. You know, as he's doing He's it. standing yeah. on business. What are you getting paid not to play right now? 39 million. Woo! He can dance, too. SOB. Hey, he did. Uh, dance well. That's an incredible. Unbelievable. Before even touching the field over there, signs a five year extension that he mm -hmm. won't even make it to with his original contract so. ending before he was let go from the team. Mm -hmm. He now. Can literally go anywhere and play for one point two million dollars. Yep. And there's gonna be a lot of teams. And yeah. you know, you you walk around and you talk about stuff, and we at the Combine, and we on here just say the salary cap's fake. Mm -hmm. It is. And I know there's a lot of people that have gone on board with that, and we were just a tiny little internet show whenever we were yelling that from the top of the mountains yeah. mm -hmm. about salary cap gymnastics that can take place. If your team wants a player, they can figure mm -hmm. out how to leverage the future yeah. into keeping the player. And then they can kick the can down the road, they say. Kick the can down the road. You're going to have to get that can sometime. But then as soon as you get there, guess what you can do again? 
you can just kick that son of a bitch again. Yep, yep. And then all of a sudden, you're just working up the strength in your leg, and you're kicking that same can 10, 15 times down right, the road. Yep. <laughs> Inevitably, you're going to have to get there. But as the salary cap continues to grow by $30 million from one year what? to the next, it's like the contracts that you sign for the future or the can that you kick in the future can fit in a lot easier whenever you decide to move on. Like the $85 million that the Denver Broncos mm-hmm. are choosing not to have access to so that they can move on from Russell Wilson. That's a massive number, obviously 35-6 and 49-4 or mm-hmm. 35-4, 49-6, whatever the math is there for the 6 and the 4 becoming the whole to make this thing the $85 million, whatever it is. It's like that's a wild move. But I assume in Sean Payton's eyes, he thinks maybe the salary cap's going to jump again. So like that that next forty nine six million, it's like obviously a lot, but still a lot of money to build a team with, which even more so makes me think kicking a can down the road right now is the best time to do it. Yeah, like right now is the best time to do yeah. it. You're not there when it when it when it comes time to what do they say to to cash in or you, it, it comes due. You might not even be there. There's a great chance if you're the GM, if you're like you're probably. You might not be there, so let's try to win right now, and then we'll figure it out at the end because with this salary cap continuing to go up and up, and they know it's going to, it will continue to go up. No doubt. You can just magically find a way to fit all these guys in. Look at this. Can we get this thing on, uh, yeah, the big one here? Yeah, the backboard. Look at these numbers. Okay, 1994, the salary cap was $34,608. Hey, thanks for all the hard work back there, boys. Good work. Good work. Way to put on a program and uh, throw your heads around and mm-hmm. destroy people <laughs> to get the game all the way to 2020, where it was 198 million, which seems big. 2021, 182. Remember, uh, something yeah. happened. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. We don't know what. A what. thing happened. I mean, we're we learning know. a lot about it now, more so than we had back then. In the moment, it existed. Uh, there was. There was a tallying of audience members as uh, cardboard cutouts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. This weekend at the Super Bowl, <laughs> there will be 5,000 humans scattered mm-hmm. safely uh, distanced apart, and there will be 45,000 cardboard cutouts. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice. Cardboard cutouts will be there. That was being promoted at one point in 2020. So they dropped down. Wow, that's, a sh- that's the first time they dropped down in the league's history. They must be dead. They must be screwed. Fast forward to 2023, 224 million. Holy shit Whoa. compared to 1994. And then you go to this year, 255 million. That's the biggest jump that is ever made yeah. from one year to the next. And with more streaming services, more sports gambling, right. more ratings, more right. eyes, more money, that thing's only going to continue to go. So when you kick that can down the road, that can might be this size <laughs> whenever you kick it. Mm-hmm. But by the time we get there, that can might be this size yeah. mm-hmm. in the salary cap. So if you want somebody, you can have them. Yeah. In the salary cap, gymnastics have been happening. The Rams had to pay the piper a little bit. The Saints have had to pay the piper yep. a couple different mm-hmm. times, even though they've remained a solid football team. But it's like with a lot of these conversations with the people that are actually in charge and feel like they you know, are obligated to have good books and mm-hmm. not just kick the can down the road because that is you know, avoiding accountability and everything like that, it's like... $1.2 million Russell Wilson, even $5 million Russell yeah, Wilson, yeah. Sure. is like a very, very, yeah. very good number for teams to be very interested in Russell Wilson. What a babyface turn. Him making $40 million bucks still. Yeah. He's still going to make $39 million. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. No matter what. He's still getting mm-hmm. that money. He's still for the revenge, Russ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Getting <laughs> team three, social media team. With a bag. Arm strength team. Yep. Mm-hmm. Quad team. Right. right. I think he has two feet doctors. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> Shoe team. Cardio team. Stationary bike guy. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Builds the bike. Of mm-hmm. course. Builds the bike. And, and uh, the gas mask yeah, the guy mask. that wears the mm-hmm. VO2 max while you're mm-hmm. doing it. And then uh, travel with pads to Monaco guy. Yep. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. That's a very important <laughs> member of the team. Yep. Very. Very important. <laughs> Helmet is separate. So he'll still be making $39 million, which is awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Earned it. Congratulations, signed the deal. But all anybody's going to view him in his eyes, this is a $3 million quarterback right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. He is like a full baby face turn happening while getting broken off. Mm-hmm. Congrats to Russ. I, it sucks that this has happened for him, but congrats to him being uh, bell of the ball probably pretty mm-hmm. soon. Yeah. I mean, look at the teams we're talking about too. Like Minnesota, that, uh, that might be one of, if if not the best wide receiver tight end, wide receiver combo when it comes to Addison, Jefferson, and Hawkinson. And then you go to the Raiders, it's like, oh, who do they have? Devontae Adams, yeah. Jacoby Myers, they just paid. Like all these situations, and even Atlanta, like Bijan, Kyle Pitts, and Drake London. And you might say, like, Kyle Pitts isn't good. 
let's Kyle see. Pitts. Kyle Pitts hasn't played with anybody. Yeah, let's okay? see. Okay, let's, let's, let's give him a chance with one guy like a Kirk Cousins who is coming off before he got Or his, Russ. Or, or yeah. Russ, yeah, or, or, or Fields. Like, there are plenty of guys, it feels like, or teams, rather, that these guys would fit in. When you said some of these quarterbacks are going to miss out, do you think absolutely that some will miss out on starters? Do you think because there were 70 different starting quarterbacks last yeah. year because of the, the year of the backup quarterback that teams might actually say, yeah, sure, like we, we can get one guy, but we should still think about possibly bringing in another? How do we feel the NFL owners are going to handle that with how many backups? How many backups were there? Wasn't it, I believe like going into like week 15, something. yeah, it was in the 60s with the amount of quarterbacks that had started. What can they do? There's going to be what something. What can you do? They're going to do. They're going to have power points. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No hip drop. <laughs> Tackles, probably. Yeah, no, tackles. They said that was tough to describe. No way. Get it out of the game. <laughs> Isn't there like there should be like malicious intent hit mm -hmm. or yes. tackle? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the hip drop tackle thing. Whenever people say it, it just makes you sound like okay. And I guess in rugby they have the hip drop tackle to something. Rugby and football a little bit different. I yeah, think not just because like yeah. of leverage and how it's in. Why? Yeah, but they're they trying to teach you how to rugby tackle. No, that's how they're keeping people's heads out of it. At a young age, they're teaching people to rugby tackle. Yeah, and rugby, no, rugby tough. Listen, rugby, oh, very tough yeah. sport. Rugby oh, players, yeah. very tough. We got yeah. nothing but respect for rugby. But it's a different collision. And the reason why is... Because you don't have a helmet. Yes, because you have. <laughs> you got a helmet, you're going to use it. Yes. It's a weapon. Guys. Guys, we can't say that. Guys. Inside voice. Gentlemen. Yeah. Gentlemen. Keep it inside nah, voice. there's no inside voice. Like, it's going to... There's going to be glancing blows. There's going to be head and hands. Like, it's going to happen. And he who is most comfortable with helmet... Normally, one who is going to utilize helmet a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'd say, like AJ, you know, at a young age, they put him bowling ring. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he knew <laughs> exactly in Ohio. Yep. And it, at first, he was like yeah. getting beat up. Oh, in second grade, going against high scores and bowling the ring. Boom, mm -hmm. Bang, Jeez. bang! He's getting beat up. And then he went yeah. home that night, and Pistol said, "You look like a little bitch out there." Mm -hmm. Toughen up, kid. <laughs> So he went to his room, helmet on, and just started banging it in his stuff. <laughs> yep. Bang, boom, bang, boom, bang. Showed his piranhas. Bingo. Mm -hmm. And then when he was in third grade, they put him back in that ring. Oh, <laughs> That's Kirk Kerbstreet how that went. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's Kirk sword. Kerbstreet how that went. <laughs> Ain't that right, AJ? We're throwing that thing around. That's what we told you. That was in high school. Well, I don't think, I yeah, do not, I am not a fan of having little grade. kids waste head contact in practice. Or, like, I don't think little kids should be banging all day long. There's, I, you well, mentioned it earlier. There's some of those, yeah. There's some of those clips. Nice. My bad. Nice. Some of those clips on there of these coaches that I. Sorry, it's hard to get past that one. That one just came. I don't know how it happened, but some of these coaches the are criminal. Show. Some of the, the drills, oh my God, the, the drills they're oh. doing are criminal. Was that with a boxer? With, no, never mind. Oh no! Oh no! The, uh, oh yeah, that's a weird situation. Yeah, the internet's alive right now. Very. They're they're saying this is going to be a crazy year. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. Uh, the I'm farmer's just almanac. Uh, what I have been reading. Uh, farmer's oh, almanac. It's going to be a crazy year. All right. Let's, of rain. The internet is awesome. Greatest yep. place of all time. Mm -hmm. Also, fault. same exact time. Worst, worst. place yep. of Absolutely. all time. Uh, I, speaking of the internet, Buffalo Bills social media account. I found a video. I think that is maybe calmed our fears. Worries. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Because we as a show that love Bill's Mafia. Oh, yeah. Well. Mute his mic. Thank you. He's a Patriot fan. <laughs> we as a show that love Bill's Mafia. Without that. Well, this yeah. fit. Keep Ty's mic on. Turn your yep. turn oh, well, it. Yeah, turn it down. You can mute mine. Thank you. Look at that. Not a <laughs> I can't hear you. Can't and hear you, Tom. Can't hear you. A little bit of snow. You can Ooh. <laughs> As a human who is a massive fan of Bill's Mafia and their commitment and what they have to go through to showcase their commitment to their team and the fact that they're getting a new stadium and they were told some things about, hey, all of your hard work being a Buffalo Bills fan, all the blizzards that you sat through, all the tables that you went through, all, all right. the ketchup and mustard that's just been bukkakied all over your faces. All right. Yep. While watching these games, it's going to pay off, and we're appreciative. We're getting you a brand new home. That's right. And whenever they laid out this brand new home, and like it was HGTV, as if you were seeing a before and after, potentially about a home in 3D, they had this beautiful stadium. No, it wasn't in a dome, no. which a lot of people said, 
Maybe. Hmm. You know, because the way the weather is. But the people of Buffalo said, mm-mm. Mm-mm. This is Buffalo Bills football. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. We need snow to be here. We want snow to be here. That is the city of Buffalo. We got that lake effect. We are northern in the altitude yep. of the United States. Latitude. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Latitude, fatitude. Yeah, right here. Yep. The belt. Latitude, as long as there's fatitude. not too much snow. But then, you know, there's too much snow and people can't sit down and watch the game and they start throwing yeah. it in there and then everything happens. Nonetheless, yeah. you got a brand new stadium. Here's a 3D rendering of it. And these Buffalo Bills fans are jacked up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know what they were shown? What was that? What was that? Big ass bison. As they should be. Big ass bison. Massive. This 3D rendering had these bison, maybe the size of the stadium itself. Yep. We got four stadium sized things. What is it? What's well, one stadium, three bison that are <laughs> roaming out in the front? Yep. It's the logo of the Buffalo Bills. A lot of people think it's Buffalo. Buffalo is a water buffalo. It actually looks kind of weird. It's got yeah, this yeah. one. Yep. Uh, the, the buffalo that we all think is a buffalo is actually a bison, which is a much worse name than a buffalo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, the bison should have been what the water buffalo was named, and the buffalo should have been what the bison was named. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, the bison that were on display, massive, massive bison. Yeah, perfect. Huge, beautiful, powerful. This is buffalo. That's right. This is America. This is our team. Then from that point to the next rendering. Yeah. <laughs> who shrunk the kids? I mean, by about 75%. Yeah, yeah exactly. Baby bison. Downsizing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are we doing? They put these bison in a little baby box and made them <laughs> weak-ass bison. They did. Right. Buffalo Bills hurt us. Be worried about this? Here's the video that was released. There's been a lot of talk about the bison yeah. out front. Yeah. We're spending a lot of time on the scale, the size, mm-hmm. and what they look like. It'll it's give beard. fans kind of an idea of how big we think they should be, which I know there's a ton of debate about. Well, they're scaled right now is 16 feet tall. We like the size of it. We think it Dark works work. for a variety of reasons. One of the first things that I downloaded the hump or the head? was the world's largest buffalo. Hump. We all agreed that it's cool because it's big, but there's no emotion there. There's no detail. Duh. It's just okay. big. If you were to create a bison a with that is 40 feet tall, yeah. oh. you're kind of then taking all of the rest of what we're doing out of proportion. No. We're not trying to say this is it. What we're saying is for scale, like buffalo, this helps man. tell that story. Yeah. Showing scale and showing movement and detail. What it will help show is that this is built for buffalo Great detail, that and dong. appropriate Great cool. detail. Like this is a cool factor. Who carved the dong? That what's come across that is that guy. we dig Where's into this. Is that a tail or two dongs? Okay, so mm. 16, mm. 16, 16 feet is big. It's not yeah. bad, yeah. 16 feet is big. It's not bad. It'll play. Do you see the big, he used the wide, the one, you can pick the width of the, of the painting uh, when you're drawing on a screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. He picked yeah. the fat yeah, one. He did. If this thing was to go 40 feet tall, look at how much yeah. we'd be balking off here. And it's like, that's a valid point. Right. If I'm standing right on the other side of a bison, I don't want to be able to see the stadium. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I want to see a big ass bison. I agree. 16 I mean, feet's big though. 16 yeah. feet. 16 feet feels big. Make one 40 footer then. Have the, have the dad there at 40 footer, the mom a 40 footer, and then a 16 footer. And maybe make it like super thin and like fragile and be like, this is what could happen to a bison. Like so a it doesn't wh- take it. And have it lined up like this with the stadium behind it. You know, so it's like maybe like 2D. Ooh. As opposed <laughs> Can to we climb it? 16 Can you pay feet. money to climb on top? The, the one that hasn't eaten well? Yeah, no. you, like it's pay money, you, you pay twenty bucks. Would you climb one in the wild? Yeah, well, <laughs> no. am I ranching with the Montana State Rodeo team? I still That's don't think point. you should. Then yes, you anyone's going to be able to get up on a sixteen foot buffalo. You get three of your buddies, shoulder on top oh, yeah. of shoulder, and then there's. I mean, I get it. Like the, but listen, pal. Okay, take your artist brain out of here. Like I don't want to hear the. Yeah. There's no emotion, and I don't want to hear that <laughs> bullshit. All right, make this thing as Put big as impossible. All right, uh, we need a forty foot bison. Yes. 40 sixteen foot. is yeah. not big enough. It's uh, not. I thought sixteen was big. That's a basketball hoop and a half. That's a big light bison. Up red too. It's not big enough. The, the eyes should be electronic Bro. and light up red. Can you imagine opposing teams walking in there and seeing a forty foot bison? Forty. Oh yeah. You already won the game. Yeah. You already won. It, yeah. It's not. Yeah. So it's probably what the top of the brick. No, that's too no. tall, no. right? Well, it should be the top of the, top of the brick. A little bit above the backboard. Yeah, above the top. A little bit. So where the chains are, maybe where the chains hang from. That. That's it should way be. Too it small. should be as tall as the top of the Thunderdome. Yes, <laughs> agreed. Yeah, that's how big it should. I be. I think it should be to the top of the brick, which is probably twenty-four. Yeah, or twenty. 
It needs to be higher than six. Sixteen is an, an intimidating number. Double. You need to be able to yeah. walk underneath it completely without ducking. Uh, okay. Exactly. Boom. There you yeah, go. Yeah, but That's I feel like these people say if they, 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 they would have given nobody touches the dong. The dong's going to be seven feet tall. Oh yeah. boy, I'm nervous. Yeah, well, well, Bill's mafia is going to do players. something with that dong. You you know that in your heart. Yeah, Roy Hibbert said that he put icy hot on his ankles and was yeah. worried that it was going to yeah, hit his... Exactly, had an issue. Feels like this bison's potentially going to have a similar issue. Oh, yeah, people standing behind it with yeah. the ketchup and mustard squirters and just going crazy with those things. I mean, that's... So many tables are getting bite. You think they're running off the head of that? To put that picture back up? In the video, it looked like there was chains. Though. Oh, my God, think of Ricochet, you know... Oh, uh, yeah. Running off the top of the, the <laughs> hump back there yep. to the head. He's doing shooting star, probably. Yep. Mm -hmm. How are they going to keep people off of there? They're going to have to build a barricade around That's why you got to like make it people bigger. People are going to climb. In yeah. the rendering, really? there was it was a chained off area. It looked like that'll work. Yeah, for oh. sure in Buffalo. Well, if they hey, listen, if, they'll get there. If they'll I was a there. Buffalo Bill fan, I would respect those Bison like I never respected anything. But what if in, you in wasn't? My life? Well, yeah, opposing fans, you might have an issue. But if an opposing fan touches a Bison, you're, uh, you gotta make it out of butter. I don't want to say kill them, but. Uh, so that was obviously massive news out of Bill's Mafia. 16 feet feels big to me yeah, when I went is. over there and looked. I mean, I, I did see Bill's Mafia was worried, though. Are they still going to have to bring shovels to shovel for the team, or are they going to provide them this year? The new stadium. The People got in the game and watched it. They yep. did. Mm -hmm. Didn't they? Yes, they did. After they he pushed, pushed the, the game Only because that Steelers fan cleared all the snow for them. <laughs> yeah, walking through. In his Woodson jersey. He did. Yeah. I believe the Packers he sent did. them a video from 1942 when they had shoots that just sent all the uh, snow down to the field. I think they're going to install that. Well, they tried to do that, but then that one kid jumped in it. He broke it. Yeah, yeah. 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 He broke that one. That's Once again, we love Bill's Mafia. Well, yeah. And if Bill's Mafia likes a 16th. This kid, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Right, we're supposed to tailgate for the snow clearing removal? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know, you tell me. What a time. We were covering. That was not that yeah. long ago. No, it wasn't. No. We love Buffalo. <laughs> hey, let's go, Buffalo. Here we go. We love Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. Sure. Emotion on that bison. They need to make it taller. What does it mean? There's no. He didn't see any emotion on the statue? Yeah, well, it's cares? stoic. A bison is stoic, obviously, because it's just outrunning its prayer. Well, the, if you want some emotion, then put a goofy-ass <laughs> facial expression on it. Boom. <laughs> they should be big enough that their eyes can be fire pits and just real yeah. fires in their eyes. People can yep. secure seats. There to watch the game. Now we're, now we're talking. Now we got some good ideas. Yes. For the From here. the eyes of the bison. Yeah. Overlooking the stadium. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> See, it feels like you guys, if they would have said it was 24 feet, would have said we needed 48 feet. See, 24 is a great number. I'd, I'd be yeah. okay with 24. Yeah. It is a very good number. 24 is good. 16, 16 just does 16. not, say, it just doesn't do it for me. It's nope. not my quinceanera. 16 is big. But it's not big enough. Yeah, yeah. I can get on somebody's shoulders and jump on the top of that thing. Exactly. You don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. What happens if someone gets on top of it and dies? Then, we'll, yeah. then they're going to say. So you guys shit. are taking this angle that it needs to be bigger because you're better people than yeah, exactly <laughs> everybody else. Safe, safe I, we're better people than that guy. Yeah, we're trying to save the people of Buffalo. You're looking out for Bill's Mafia. Yeah, exactly. we, we all know what Bill's Mafia entails. We know that they're, they're jumping off a of thing. Yes. yes, they're a rowdy bunch. And 16 feet is scalable. And those yes. people are going to scale that son of a bitch. And someone's going to take a little, you know, jump off it like a ricochet shooting star. Someone might see him on Monday night. Night Raw do that at some point and say I could do that off of Jeff Billy Hardy. Yeah, Billy the yeah, Buffalo. Exactly. I'm gonna hop on that thing and go do that. Shane O'Mac. <laughs> you know <laughs> that's not high enough for Shane O'Mac. No, no, no. <laughs> that is not high enough for Shane O'Mac. What a psycho. Yeah, yeah. lunatic. How tall is that? Nah, nah it's not tall. It's only 16. 16. Add 40 feet to it. When you get that thing to six stories, it looks. <laughs> if I'm gonna jump off that, uh, you like the Bills or no? You think that's a uh, 16 feet? Tall? I don't think it's final either. word. You don't Should think be higher. 16 feet, we can probably get up there with three of us. Boom. So that's a, that's your guys' take. Is if it's 16 feet, they're going to have people on top of that thing, and people of are going to be falling off. Yeah. And, and it needs to be a showstopper. It, it needs to be a like, year damn, that's huge. Too. No, 16 feet is gigantic. I mean. No, that's just another statue. I mean, think of like Peyton's statue is probably 15 feet 12, tall, isn't it? I bet it? that's Outside? 12. Yeah, it's really high up. So think about a bison that's not nearly big. You should put a foam pit around it. Yeah, but like, or a moat. Peyton's a ball person. Pit. Yeah, ball pit would be sweet. Like, yeah, ball pit. Pay Peyton's <laughs> a person. Clean. 
<laughs> exactly. Like, this is a buff. This is a buffalo. A like no one's climbing Peyton to stand on top of it's his head. Like, like there, the people are going right, to yeah. climb the bison because there's room to hang out up there. What if <laughs> Colts hat yeah. climb up, sit on Peyton's shoulders? Yeah, piggyback. Yes. Pig- yeah. We had a buffalo in front of our old studio, and people would always climb that. Obviously, it was only like four feet up or whatever. Yeah, yeah. that was well, that was ground jump, level. Yeah, people yeah. Would yeah. jump on that left and right. Yeah, that was. And homeless people love getting up on top of that. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that bull in Chicago or New York. Those things are the same size as the one next to the old office, I believe. Anyways, uh, I like the size, but until we see it in person, I don't think we can fully judge. Maybe bigger. I'm always on the fan of let's do it bigger. You said 24. I think that's a very reasonable height. Yeah. 16 bottom of chest. Sure. Mm -hmm. 24 top of chest. That's what you're saying, AJ? That'd be perfect. Yes, you need to be able to walk fully underneath it without ducking, like a a normal six-foot Well, what about... The meat, well, yeah, the meat should go over. You shouldn't be able to touch the meat because you know people will take advantage. Meat, meat should be that above his shoulder, but not ahead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nah. You should be able yeah. to walk by. People get black eyes because they don't see, and they walk, and the, the you know the tip of it just nicks them right in the eyeball. Right hey, the what happened to Stan? Well, <laughs> oh, uh, Bison's meat. Yeah. Well, no, it should, the meat should be the play like a champion today at Notre Dame, smacking it. Yeah. Everyone yeah. needs to right. walk through it. You're right. Hey, touch, touch OJ's meat today, bang! Because <laughs> they're naming it after Bill's legends. Right? <laughs> All right. I'm looking at the Peyton statue. Peyton statue looks like it's 16 feet. That is not big enough if yeah. it's 16. Exactly. Look how tall those things are. I'm hopping. He's fit. Look how fit he is. That one you can't tell from that angle. Yeah, but he's you got a guy's head down here. The vein work in his forearm. Yeah, he's jacked in it, obviously. Nice. Gave a little okay here. So, yeah, you make me look good, obviously. Next year, we're going to have to climb on Peyton. How tall is yeah, that? Look, that's, that's, that's got to be 15 16, feet. 16, 15 feet. Because it's two right. It's like twelve feet there, right? That's not. That's not exactly right. Ray's got the lo- the wrong. Oh uh, yeah. How tall is the guy reenacting it? I'm saying five <laughs> ten. I'm, I'm guessing five ten. <laughs> yeah, five ten. So yeah, that's fifteen footer. Fifth? You think that's three? That's like two mm, of them, right? Yeah, it's twelve twelve feet maybe. All right. Anyways, good luck. We can't wait to see these big ass bison yep, that you yeah. guys are gonna have in there. Yeah. Johnny and Ice looks good outside him. Yes, he does. Yeah. Make it bigger. Don Shula. It's a nice one. Oh, that's tall. Look how tall that. That's 15 feet at least. Yeah. No way. They're what are we pick, talking about? Oh, maybe, 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 they, about, maybe they're they building up the like that. Oh, uh, smart. And then it'll be yeah. 16 feet up. Put yeah. it up on a stage. How they no, no, no. Yeah. How they it needs to be six. The bison pillars. needs to be put six. Put each, yeah. each yeah. leg on a pillar. Yeah, like, uh, like 10 feet in the air. Because you can add, you can steal four feet on a statue. Right. Yeah. So now yeah. we're at 20 feet. Yep. Now we're dancing, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but bison don't they're not stage animals. <laughs> oh. Well you put like you put like a mount a hill. Yeah, like no, that. okay. You yeah. like make it look like it's okay. one plateaus. of the rolling I mean, fields right. yeah. that is running alongside. Yeah. Look how tall the Statue of Liberty is. That thing's a statement piece. That's what we need. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I was from the front. I don't disagree. Ladies and gentlemen, we call. are it's in the middle call. of a time called the off season, which we love. Mm-hmm. We uh, get a chance to follow along with the sports that we enjoy. More than any other people on earth. What? The NHL is uh, currently in the middle of one of its greatest seasons of all time. Connor McDavid is the real deal. Mm -hmm. This guy's electrifying. Plays for a team in Canada that's left on the map, so you'll never watch him. But if you get an opportunity to, you should. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh Penguins are on a rebound time right now. About to go on a run and win every single game so we can make the playoffs. The Vegas Golden Knights got Jackie Aces back. That's right. I guess the Florida Panthers are... Yeah, they're cooking. Yeah, they did. Number one team in the league right now. Better than the sorry ass Boston Bruins. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Who are in the conversation at number one and not the bottom like the Pittsburgh Penguins. Watch your mouth. The Detroit Red Wings aren't even fielding a team. No, no, no. Sh- We're Hockey Town's back. We're going to be in the playoffs this year. Well, you're definitely better than the stupid low life Dallas Stars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That Texas down. Hockey's buzzing. We just added your boy Tanev, too. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Legend. And how are the Blackhawks? Connor Bedard still playing? Yeah, he's doing really good. Yeah, the rest of the team, not as good. Worst team in hockey. It's like a Wembley type situation. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, the NHL is phenomenal. The NBA, we just talked to Perk. Great. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Great right now. They're in a good time right Hot. now. Especially in that Western Conference, there's like eight teams that are currently win or go home situation. That's good for competitive levels as we watch on TV, on TNT, and on ESPN. There are also other sports that are happening. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, time for a segment called Sports That Are Happening! Yeah. Oh. 
AJ, these are sports around the world that are currently taking place that we need to pay attention to. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what's back? What's that? Lacrosse! Whoa! Lacrosse Lacrosse is back! Yeah. We're doing some cradling in the national champion Notre Dame Fighting Irish Kavanaugh boys are back making highlights all over the field. Hell yeah. yeah. That was Patty Kavanaugh, no look over Ooh. the shoulder. How you doing? Bounce off leg. Through the leg. That's a goal against Maryland. Five hole. Sorry about it. Now, Four I will team. say the Notre Dame team is looking very sharp to go back to, to back. back with national champions. But there's some other teams that are playing pretty good, Con Man. Yeah, some very good teams. Right now, Denver at the top. They won a national championship in the last five years. Actually, um, our boys, I think that we all support no matter what. The troops, West Point, is uh, sitting at number two. I'm rooting for them. Of course, always have to. Hopkins and then ND at four. I, I believe the top three last week all lost. Now there's been some shakeup. Oh. That's why Notre Dame is now in that four spot. But uh, they do have a guy, Jordan Faison, and the football player apparently going to the draft no matter what going forward. I, he was a true freshman, played last year. Now he's playing lacrosse for the Notre Dame boys. Huge addition. He is an absolute stud. They're going to be just fine. And how the hell do I watch? These are on TV? Yeah, ESPN Plus actually has, I believe, like 300 of the college across games uh, this spring. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of college they across. That, man. Yeah, they play a lot of games. Every day there's a game? On ESPN Plus, yes. Okay, so shout to lacrosse being back. AJ, I know you love the sport. When we were growing up, not nearly as accessible in the places that we grew up, but nowadays that we've learned, boy, it's good to see them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's good to see them. Lacrosse is awesome, man. It's, lacrosse, you have to, like, you're, it's physical. You have, you're running a whole lot, and you have to work in space. Like, you're constantly trying to juke guys, make a miss, and on defense, you got to bend, you know, bend your knees, shuffle, figure it out. Like, there's a lot of good carryover to football, I believe, and other sports. Pac-Man, you love lacrosse. You got into it last year. You went to one of their games. I yeah. got into it last year, bro. It's, 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 it's way more physical than you think it is. Mm-hmm. I, I got yep. a lot of respect for the mm-hmm. lacrosse guys. So, shout out to lacrosse being back. You know what else is back, and What's we that? only acknowledge it, like, once a year? Hmm. Women's college softball. Ooh. Remember whenever the tournament happens, oh, we yeah. think to ourselves, holy hell, this is electrifying. The yeah. ball's flying around. Bing. There's bing, boom, boom, celebrations. Ah, chance, what? yelling, teamwork. Mm-hmm. Well, it's back, and uh, <laughs> history has been ruined. Uh, yep. uh, uh, Oklahoma uh, had a 71-game win streak. They lose to Louisiana, who was 9-11 and 11 going into this game. Wow. Crazy Cajuns. What an upset. And this Louisiana team, they say, sneaky good. Man, they yeah. make some noise. Sneaky good. They're below 500. Just beat the best team in, like, women's softball history. Yep. Mm-hmm. Huh. Look for them to maybe make a run. But also to Oklahoma, let's not talk about it ending. Let's no. talk about it happening. Good Congrats run. on Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you get that out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Get that out of the way for the mm-hmm. term women's college softball is taking place. Always fun to watch. Where do I watch that at? Where's that at? That is also, I believe, a ESPN mm-hmm. Plus product. Okay. You know what else is back that is not an ESPN product? What? The greatest league in the world. <laughs> of course. When it comes to one particular sport. Hmm. The MLS is back. I don't know if you've heard this. Messi's back on a soccer field. Now, not as much buzz as last year when Messi came to town, but he's still destroying MLS teams who are the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, Messi, fresh off a Balloon d'Or award, Mm -hmm. a World Cup champion, a GOAT in a lot of people's conversations and eyes, still in his prime, playing in America alongside that man right there, Luis Suarez who has been a human in the past, Mm -hmm. super competitive, absolute dog. This Inter-Miami team should win on. They said we're not playing a little Fugues tournament that they played last year for free. They're trying to win the MLS Cup. They stunk at the beginning, but now they're hot. Gumpy, tell us about the best MLS stuff. They uh, they won their first game 2-0, didn't look that great. They went Wednesday, had to go to L.A., play Sunday, score late, tie it, have a week off after their world tour, beat the shit out of Orlando, 5 nothing. play Montreal this weekend. They are buzzing. Yeah, there's people saying that they stunk, though, right? It feels like people kind of want Messi and Inter-Miami to fail for some reason. I don't understand it because they've done so much for the league. Well, I know those, uh, those, those scumbags yeah, in see, Cincinnati. Oh, I see Cincinnati oh, yeah. couldn't even win when Pac-Man pulled the sword out. Oh, oh, oh you pulled really? the sword, they lost? Yeah, no, oh, we did not no. lose. <laughs> we did not lose. Oh, no. We did not lose. Yikes. I remember FC Cincinnati booing Messi out of the stadium. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't respect. love that. You know what else is happening right now? What? NASCAR. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, NASCAR. Right. NASCAR. Woo. Left, 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 left. <laughs> straight, 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 straight. <laughs> left, 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 left. Straight. Three stages. 
Oh. Hard to pay attention to. But once you see the third stage is happening, now, now we got some real racing. They were just in Las Vegas this yeah. past weekend. Yeah, fast Congrats, track. Kyle Larson, former uh, virtual racer. Yep. Yep. Oh, he won this one. He, he's he, winning every one. He wins one. a lot of them. He's yeah. winning every one of them, AJ. That's why we're still talking about him right. after everything that happened. Uh, coming up, the Sunday Shriners Children's 500. That's a good one. At the Phoenix Raceway. You yeah. know, those cars are running hot out in the desert. Mm -hmm. Big oh, time. Yeah. That's happening. So, you know what else is happening? What? Pro Bull Riding. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Just came through <laughs> Indianapolis. Congrats to Dalton Castle. This guy, big winner. Go, Dal yeah. Dalton took home the prize here at an eight-second ride uh, in lovely yeah, Indianapolis ride. Gainbridge Arena. And I'll tell you, these PBR bulls, I got mass respect yeah. for it. And they're trying to find the next one that will ride the bull. And I believe it's John Crimber, Ooh. who's an 18-year-old out of Decatur, Texas. He's won a lot. He's number three in the world. He's been uh, doing bull riding since he was six. I love. They need to stop looking for the next Next rider, they got him in Crimber. I want to see the next bull. Look at this bull. PBR, <laughs> get this bull oh, on yeah. the tour. Whoa. I don't know oh, where yeah. this barn is. I don't know what's happening. But I need oh. to see Crimber oh, oh. and Dalton Castle battling against this big, bad son of a bitch. Damn. We're nowhere oh. near ending. Look at this. Holy. Who? Oh, yes. still on. Who? Oh, what? Oh, oh. Who? Who? We continue on YouTube and ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you tomorrow on ESPN+. Have a good one. Goodbye. We need oh that bull God. in what? the PBR. Are you kidding me? Going mess? What Who are we is doing? That, it, it it is that, that guy's didn't... face hit back twice, which is not good. Yeah, and Holy this bull, by the way, is God. not just a Dude, freak Holy athlete. Dude. Oh, no. Great IQ. Got eyes on the bull. You thought I was done? Huh? Huh? Oh, no. Huh? no. no. Oh, no. You, you thought I was done? No. Huh? Oh, I saved your life just because I wanted to. Landed right in front wow. of him. And then ends up taking a, a right turn away from him. That bull Jeez. is Holy who hell. I want to see in the PBR. And I'd like to see Dalton Castle and John Crimber, <laughs> the human representatives, go ahead and tame that bull that's got a 75-inch vertical of pissed-off activity. <laughs> now, listen, I respect these young bucks, but uh, neither one of those kids has the stones to get on that bull because you... John Crimber, get on that bull. Oh, no, yeah, if he gets his helmet on, he will. <laughs> that ain't my fucking PBR, all right? I I'll just say it. That guy right there, you notice what he didn't have on? Didn't have a helmet. Now, granted, that bull stepped on his head, maybe killed him. He might have permanent brain damage. That's part of why we watch PBR. <laughs> Take the damn helmets off, I'm, all right? I'm okay. Take them off. I'm okay with the helmets if everybody's doing it, which I think yeah. is the case. This guy's not. Ready? Yeah. That's yeah, the PBR. That guy's Ready? a new boom. Oh, I thought your cowboy no. hat has a little bit of padding in it, it now does. PBR. I it thought does. Yeah, it yeah. fell yeah. off. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know and what era. This one. I don't know what era they stopped just being cowboy hat bull riders. Oh I'm assuming God. it was around the same oh. time we developed studies about CTE and stuff. Mm -hmm. But most of the PBR wears helmets now, right? Yeah. Uh, all their all Not their, the ones I want to watch. Probably half. John Crimber is wearing a helmet. He's 18 years old. He, he's the next one. We need to keep him that around. His brain good for a long it time. It is. Thank you. It's the, it says a lot about America. <laughs> You're talking about the cowboys? Our, our bull riders are wearing helmets now. Not my America. Our boys want to live, Tony. We need our boys to have helmets <laughs> We on. need John Crimber to be riding bulls safety. for the next 10 to 15 years. Bingo. Not That's the best bull in America bull. right there. And they grabbed some drunk doofus out of the crowd and said, hey, you want to become a starter? Today? And did he go eight seconds? He did not. John Crimber ain't going eight seconds on that thing. John Crimber nope. saddling that fucking bull. I'd like to see it. PBR's happening. Friday in Banger, Maine. You can watch the Great next place. PBR. Great okay. place for PBR. That bull is, is actually shocking. Yeah. You, you said you yeah. said not to watch it till before since I hadn't seen it yet. That, that was one of the most uh, impressive feats of athleticism. You I think, think he's done? He's seen. not. He's jumping higher the next one. Yeah, he keeps like, going. Like, for real, did they get him on meth? What happened? I don't know how the bulls are treated. Obviously, we try not to look into the animal treatment of the sports, like horse racing and other things like that. But I don't know if the bull is necessarily the most happy when it's jumping the highest. But this particular bull has got to be the biggest bucker Holy in shit. the history of bucking yeah. bulls. So they just tied his balls real tight. Well, yeah. to Ty's point, I'm sure this drunk asshole said yeah, something like... Sticking his fingers up its butt yeah. beforehand. Yeah, idiot. Yeah. 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 Oh, squeezing its nuts. Oh, I hope not. I don't think so. I mean, he might have been. He's boozed <laughs> yeah, <really. up. laughs> He's boozed This up. one is the one, like... Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> it does yeah. a full turn. Jeez. Almost flipped himself. And then you're talking about the balls. I mean, they were just flapping there. And you're talking about a bull. Like, right there. Oh, my this God. One. Oh. Right kick that guy in the face. Like, oh, he almost shoots And then said, I could kill you if I wanted. And chooses not to. <laughs> right there. Chooses not to. That's what this bull has the ability to do.
<laughs> Let alone that tail. Imagine getting hit by that fucking tail. Oh, it would hurt God. so bad. Take an eye out. Anyways, PBR's happening Friday in uh, Bangor, Maine. Speaking of animals doing stuff, you know what's going on in Alaska? In mm. Alaska? The Iditarod. Oh, oh, love it. Boy. Love it. The annual yes, Iditarod race is taking place in Alaska, about an hour north of Anchorage. Yeah, I believe so. That's where they start, about 80 miles north. And this is where they're bobsled, no, uh, dog dogs. sledding. Mm -hmm. yep. And the dogs are the stars of the show here. Correct. The dogs are the ones that are gritting it out. Now, obviously, the racers have to be able to have a relationship with the dogs, motivate the dogs, guide the dogs, Bye. keep the dogs on track. Whenever they're not racing, got to refresh the dogs, mm -hmm. got to rub the dogs, keep but. the dogs healthy. Not easy. No. This isn't a dog walker, people no. are saying. No, no. it's a thousand-mile race. This is a real talent. Yeah. And this is some tough conditions that man's best friend get to showcase how big of dogs, dogs they are. I do believe some dogs end up passing. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Tough That's conditions. Just, so we don't like that at all. But this particular I did rod a little bit different. It's not just about the dogs and the dog sledder. This one is about a fucking moose getting involved. What? <laughs> yep. Breaking news out of the Iditarod from the Robinson Racing Kennel. Wally likes to plan ahead, but the Iditarod is all about overcoming unexpected hurdles. Last night, in the dark, on a trail with a lot of hills, great riding, curving through the trees, Wally and the dogs ran over a moose. It was at the bottom of a hill, and they bounced right over it. Earlier, Jesse had punched it in the nose when it was kicking at his dogs. Dallas came along next, and the moose attacked. Dallas did the only thing he could do. Shot the moose in the fucking face to defend himself and his dogs. He said it dropped on his sled, so it wasn't a long shot. The rules say the animal must be cared for, so Dallas had the very unenviable task of field dressing a moose oh. in the middle of his run. Mm. A reminder of how wild and remote the country they are traveling is and how quickly a musher has to respond to danger. Mm. Uh, that was a real moose. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even having to deal with all of this, Dallas is still in first place, and still. Dallas has won the Iditarod numerous times in the past. Yes. Dog. Dallas and his dogs, absolute dogs, even having to deal with a fucking moose yes. in the Iditarod. Shout out to the Iditarod happening. Shout, Shout out. out. You can follow along at Iditarod.com. Iditarod.com. I do believe the person after Dallas also ran over the carcass yes. of said moose and mm. uh, it caused some damage to his slug. Yeah, and probably legitimized the story. Yeah, I was I was on mile 470 or whatever, and that's what was that a was? moose carcass. Yeah. Did you guys see that? Massive fucking hole in its head. Oh, yeah, Dallas punched it. Yeah. Yep. Dallas right in the nose. covered in blood. Yeah, he's actually wearing the, he wearing yeah, the, wearing the, moose wearing the horns. Yep. Yeah, he's, yeah like, he looks Cole. like Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Leo and the bear. Rest in peace to that moose. Yep. yep. Rest, in peace. Rest in peace, moose. What happened with Leo and that bear? I didn't watch that movie. It, uh, Leo it's, won. It's based on a true shit story. Out of him. Yeah. Out of Leo? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but who wins? Leo Leo dead. Who wins in the end? Yeah. Leo does. Leo always gets wins. Done. He sleeps inside a horse. Yeah. He, had to, he had to gut a horse. Like Bear Grylls did. Yeah, and sleep inside of it to stay warm. Leonardo DiCaprio? Yep. Mm -hmm. Was this in the Iditarod? No. Uh, no, 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 just no. Uh, similar conditions. And also <laughs> happening in sports, ladies and gentlemen, Joey Chestnut. Chestnuts <laughs> has returned to the limelight last night, destroying pierogies. Oh, okay. is that what those are? At the Cavaliers Celtics halftime performance, Jason and Travis Kelsey are in attendance. The Cavaliers are in second in the Eastern Conference. What are we going to do at halftime? Three pierogi eaters versus one greatest eater of all time. Joey Chestnuts ate more pierogies than all three of the Ohio fucks on the left side trying to keep up in the same event. Competition eating is is happening right now. Unbelievable. Good work, Joe. Joey Chestnut still has his fastball, AJ. That's what I'm seeing. Does he have some kind of residency with the Cavs? Because I went to a game a couple years ago, and Joey <laughs> ate something at halftime on the Jumbotron from a tunnel in the back. No, the Cavs just get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They know that what Joey Chestnut's hey, 39? Oh, my goodness. He had 39? He didn't even know. Jeez. No. I <laughs> thought I was going to get 50. Oh, look at me. Yep, fucking champ. <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> Jason and Travis Kelsey, that's champion. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah. Exactly. That's greatest of all oh. time. Do you remember it wasn't that long ago, 4th of July, when they were going to cancel the hot dog eating contest, mm -hmm. yeah. and Joey Chestnut said, no, we're not. No. Yeah. We're fucking doing it. Mm -hmm. They said, Joey Chestnut, there's some lightning, though, or something like that. He said, I am lightning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I bring the thunder. I am, mm -hmm. I am the storm. <laughs> yeah. Get the cameras, hoist it up in the metal things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's do this thing. And guess what they did? Yes, right away, Mr. Chestnut. They ran it right they off did. the mm -hmm. bat. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a goat. Competition speed eating has happened. Welcome back, Joey Chestnuts.
Good to have Thank you home. And that's what's, uh, those are sports that are happening currently. I'm mm -hmm. happy we did that. Can we address the elephant in the room, though? They're eating elephants? No, he's no, talking no. about the... Talking about I'm talking about that. I never knew that they called dumplings pierogies. Learn something new every day. I'm not doing it. Who that. said that? You can guess. You know. <laughs> you know. I don't. I have a couple of names running through my head. Yeah. Yep. yep. Those two are kind Let's of. Let's hear the, it. The two at the top are the ones. When did you hear? When did this person say this? Last night, immediately after seeing the video of Joey Chestnuts, goes, "Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Don 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 were called broke. pierogies. <laughs> it's a heavy Pittsburgh type show. I feel like you, Pennsylvania, you understand the yeah. pierogi situation. Mm -hmm. You would think, yeah. And we were all mightily. <laughs> offended mm -hmm. immediately. And then his tag team partner, Stuper, jumped in and goes, I'm right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Bob. That was talk, obviously. Dumpy has some and weird then, name for them, too. Rogue, Rogue, they're called Rogue Lords for short. Oh, Rogue, Rogue Lords? Lords? Yeah, so the, sure, the, so the regular, <laughs> regu short? regular pierogies are pierogies, but if you spruce them up, cheese, peppers, onions, they're called Rogue Lords. What's the long version of Rogue Lords? <laughs> Pierogi Pierogi Lords. has yeah, more letters Lords. than Rogue Lords. Does it? That's hard to imagine. Might be tied. Rogue's <laughs> <laughs> a deceptively long that. word. Uh, anyways, welcome back, Joey Chestnuts. Didn't even know. Maybe he does dumplings next, talk. Yeah. That'd be cool. Probably How about those pierogies squishing in his hands? I know. So gross. Yeah. You think he just did plain? Yeah. Yeah, had to have. What do you have, a little, little butter? Does he puke or not? Does he say, Does he puke no, he after can't. or not? Nope. No, you're not allowed to in that particular like thing. It, uh. I, I mean, they like train for this, don't they? Eat like lettuce, different things oh, to try yeah. to expand their this stomach. This is full time job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you for Joey yeah. Chestnut? Yeah, he seems Gallons perfect. He's he, perfect for the job. He lives this. He doesn't train this. It's a talent that not a lot of people have. Um, we actually, and we've said this numerous times before, and thirty nine pierogies in a minute is certainly <sighs> phenomenal. Or however many minutes it was, godlike. It's a record break. He beat three Ohio Fox who eat. You see those guys? Mm -hmm. They eat. They yeah. <laughs> There's no Zempic. Those three, uh -uh. they are eating. Mm -hmm. They are doing that whole thing. His most impressive feat was when he drank 13 pints of beer in a minute and 10 seconds or so. Yeah. We saw that at our show. Yeah. Just came together for New Year's. Joey Chestnuts happened to be in town. We know him. Mm -hmm. We've got a chance to chat with him. Hey, you want to stop by the show? Sure. Any chance you want to do anything on the show? Shoot, what are your ideas? It's New Year's Eve, everybody's drinking. What if you drank like a few beers or whatever? I could probably do that. Well, what's like an impressive amount of beers? If you did like six beers pretty quickly, that'd be pretty crazy. How about 13? <laughs> yeah, that sounds okay. better. Okay, yeah. well, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, get 13 <laughs> beers. we'll get 13 beers. How quickly are you gonna do this? He goes, I'm not really a drinker, that's other people's stuff. I, I, I like, I'm not, I don't know how it's gonna go. He took the first six down in like 30 seconds. Yeah. Boo, 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 mm -hmm. boo, boo. Gone. No spill. 13 of them. At the end, he started doing like a little. <laughs> yeah. He had to like <laughs> straight yeah. it down, and then he got it. And I'll tell you, he does not puke because all that beer and alcohol was inside of him. Yeah. And we watched it oh, yeah. for the next three hours. <laughs> He was awesome. Yeah, he was. He washed it down with vodka afterwards. Was he was a bottle of vodka. He was <laughs> fine until he mixed in the liquor, and then you know it all hit him. But so he is impressive. What we're saying, he is built different than everybody else, mm -hmm. and he found his calling. And thank God that that has become a sport that you can be a professional in. And he's the right one. Mm -hmm. He's the right one for us. He is. Yeah. Keep he going, is. Jaws. Don't stop. Let's get to a break, shall we? I forgot about that hot dog thing. That was so awesome. The, the, he made Kobe the scene leave. of him yeah. <laughs> walking. You remember when that PETA protester came up and he like put the guy <laughs> in like a fucking headlock and yeah, like almost right. choked him out? Yeah, everybody talks about old buddy coming up to Buzz and saying you didn't go to the moon and punch yeah. him. Yeah, yep. People forget about Joey Chestnut. He grabbed Handling that son business of a with so a PETA. quick. In the middle yeah. of heat. Heat. Joey Chestnut takes no prisoners. Play, no, 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 no. No food left behind. Never. <laughs> or booze. Or no. what we saw. Right. Mm -hmm. It was impressive, AJ. He could I, I get like a a beer bong that holds like eight beers. I bet he could take it down in four seconds. So I've I've done a six beer one in Morgantown. I Jesus. Took, it was quite a feat. I didn't know what I was signing up for whenever I did it. Large crowd. So kind of put on the spot. Yeah. Showed up, walked into Morgantown was awesome. I don't yeah. know if it still is. It was awesome. Invited to a gathering in a house. Walk over, as soon as you get there, everybody's in the front yard. 
there's a beer bong hanging from like the third floor. I'm like, you want to do it? I'm like, sure, we'll like this. Oh, you get the super one. What do you mean? Six beers in there. Oh, I already agreed to this. I'm standing on this thing. <laughs> Let me do this. That thing hits my mouth like a, yeah. Like a fire hose. Moving. So a little bit of spray, mm -hmm. but it's going down. Finish it. Yeah. Place goes bananas. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Middle of the day. Yeah. I felt like a, I mean, I legitimately, holy shit type moment. Uh -huh. like, I fucking did it. Half a second after that thing went down, it was trying to get back up. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, I had to. Oh, see you guys. Yeah, I gotta go take turn, piss. turn the corner. Projectile. <laughs> We're talking projectile across yeah. street. That thing was coming right back out. Joey Chestnuts does not have mm -hmm. that somehow. Crazy. I, I don't know what it is. He's able to like stretch his stomach just to keep stuff in there without having the, hey, this is way too much. I don't know how he does it. Genuinely. I have no idea. Let's see who the next one is. I mean, he he made people forget about it with Kobayashi, and I thought nobody would beat that mm -hmm. guy. Yeah, they were trying to babyface Kobayashi, too. They were. And I watched the documentary. He's like, America. That's yeah. what I thought. Boom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just like I thought. Let's get to a break. Uh, Dalton Schultz, Houston Texans tight end for at least the next three years. Just signed a $36 million deal. Will join us on the other side. Nice. Historic rookie season for C.J. Stroud. Why does Dalton Schultz think that's the case? Mm -hmm. What's the future for the Houston Texans? Mm -hmm. Losing to the Colts, obviously. But outside of that, well. <laughs> be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. Five. Hey, we're up to something big. Hey, we're up to something big, AJ. We are up to something. This is the coolest moment of the history of my existence. I think people are going to be startled. It's a joke, and I can't thank everybody enough, honestly. I'm up to something. <laughs> oh! Let's go. Not only are we going back to Plum to do something cool, but today is the day that our heater horse has arrived for the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's a pretty big deal. You know, whenever you get a chance to give back to where you're from, especially a place that helped create me and mold me, I'm very, very lucky to do it. I'm lucky to be from here, and it seems like the only smart thing to do would be give back. Mm -hmm. What's up, Kenny Wood, dude? Kenny Wood is named after Kenny's Woods. A man named Kenny owned the hill in the woody area. They turned it into an amusement park, which is a Yinzer stable. So Jeezy actually shots out this area we can I think life can be much simpler whenever you just take care of your people, enjoy mm -hmm. your life, and do your thing, yeah. and that's all we're trying to do. You know, growing old, slowly dying. How about you? How's everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give a full lead up to how I got to where I'm at. I think I'm very lucky to be from here. If you're a kid that has walked through these halls, you understand something that not a lot of people do. I think Plum is a much different place than everyone else. And then there's Nick up there. Go look at Nick how pissed off he is. This past summer, I was driving through here because I was here for an event, and Angelo Bolino, little blonde haired kid, was kicking on the same field that I used to kick on as a child and he had like two balls and a holder. And I was watching him kick, and then he would go shag for himself, and then he would come back and kick. And the easy question is, if he had 10 balls, how much better could Angelo Bolino be? If I would have been able to have 10 balls, 15 balls, new cleats, new everything, chances to go to camps with my teammates and everything, what could have happened? So I said to myself, literally after meeting with Angelo, great season, by the way, dude. I said, if I ever get a chance, I'm gonna try to take care of the potential humans and kids that were in my exact position in club. I'm gonna give 200,000 to the Plum area of soccer. I'm gonna give 150,000 to the PMFA youth football. I'm gonna give 100,000 to the baseball youth. I'm gonna give 100,000 to the lacrosse. And then we're gonna have two million in this fund that'll just start. And hopefully it'll only go on from here. Sweet stuff for sports. Just anything to make everybody's, you know, the teams and the players' lives easier, better. Trying to streamline the entire process of taking care of the athletes of Plum High School is uh, kind of what it's all about. Thank you, too. Wow, dude, that was cool. All right, Marathi. Like the Indy. You're going to have a lot of people that have never accomplished anything in their life tell you that what you're thinking about doing isn't possible. Just because they don't think they could accomplish it doesn't mean anything to you. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Hey, we're all Mustangs here. Let's go. 
just want to do what's yeah. right, but turned around and got dropped. Great sportsmanship. Into the cover, he has sportsmanship, but Mia Hill just picked up her first win ever in NXT. Here is your winner. Everybody's got Bryce Young, Will Levis, and Will Anderson uh -huh. above C.J. Stroud, allegedly. Lock him in. We will 1 million percent continue to drive that narrative. Uh -huh. Because with the, what my seen, A.J., and what yeah. you have seen, if C.J. Stroud ends up at the Colts at number four, uh -huh. I'm happy about the future of the Colts all of a sudden. Yep. So this will be the last time we say this. C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback in this draft class. That's right. For sure. We are massive fans of them. And whenever we say whatever we say over the next few months before the draft, we would like it to not be held against us because we know we are a part of the entire system here. Uh -huh. And we need C.J. Stroud and Indy. Have, have to have them. Plus, it's really fun to say Stroud. Yeah. Yeah, and we need him to go down to the fourth pick. <laughs> yeah, right. you think they have to trade up? Because Texans are right there at two, and, you know, those are the two quarterbacks of the future. Well, I'll tell you what, there's an opportunity and a chance for us to move, too. we got a lot of pieces to the sure. puzzle that That's aren't right. necessarily going to be there in the future, probably. You bundle that with the four overall pick, I think you could maybe move up to one. Yeah. And then you get C.J. Stroud! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people! And welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Big Sports Wednesday, March 6th, 
2024 Hour 3 of the program starts now. Sports! Our wonderful way to go. That's A.J. Hawk, who's a Super Bowl champion and college football national champion. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt Sweet Hat. Hey, thank you. Shout out Jack Carr. Hell Has yeah. he got anything going on? What is, uh, he's doing something. He's been very active yep. on his Instagram. New series is coming out. Yes, he is writing his next book. He actually, mm. this day in history, uh, Jack oh. Carr released his first uh, <laughs> novel in the Terminal List. Wow. <laughs> Come on. I this can't day. believe that came up. I can't believe that came up. That's how much respect we have for Jack Carr. Amen. Remember, he headshotted yes. Arthur I. Oh. Fischl. That's right. Right <laughs> Here. Yeah. Boom. Bang. Gun's Money. still up there. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom in on that. Zoom in on that, Foxy. Uh, uh, okay. uh, uh, no side. coverage. Uh, no coverage. I have to go to the other side. We don't have the other side up. Son of a... There it is. Oh, there, there it is. is. Boom. Boom. Oh, sweet. Boom. Thank you, Jack Carr. Thank you, Jack. I love you, Jack. <laughs> Jack Carr saved the world with that gun. He did. Nobody will ever, <laughs> ever understand that Jack Carr saved the world with that gun right there. That's right. AI was going to blow everything up. Mm -hmm. That is real. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we took yeah, care of it. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. we won't forget. Shout out to him. Shout out Jack Carr and the Winkler Axis. I can't wait for the next book. Oh, I know. I can't wait for the, the show? next show. Oh, yeah. baby. Yeah, One half of the hammer. Dang. Cowboys turn. Diggs is here. NFL legend and current universal rapper. Pac-Man Jones. Boy, Pac. Pac. Joining us now is a tight end who just signed a three-year deal with the Houston Texans, the team we watched him play for last year after having a five-year career with the Dallas Cowboys. Want to stand for Big Brain. Ooh. Big Brain. Jeez. Ladies and gentlemen, Big Pockets now. Oh, oh. Oh. Dalton Schultz. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, guys. Hey, Appreciate you, it. Hey, thank you so much for joining us, brother. Congrats on a new deal. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about it a little bit. Last year, we were watching C.J. Stroud in wonder and amazement about how he seemed to so easily dissect NFL defenses and not make any mistakes. What was it about your offense last year, you think, that uh, was the reasoning or cause for the success that you had? And how pumped are you to be back with Houston to continue to build on what you guys started this last year? Dude, so pumped, man. Um, to have a guy come in like that, like, and step in and just be able to, like, you know, take the reins and hit the ground running. Um, CJ's he quickly cemented himself as, you know, one of the top quarterbacks in the league, man. And, um, you know, I can't say that everybody, you know, saw it coming from, you know, just a rookie. But, uh, you know, talking to CJ, it's just the amount of belief and trust that he has in himself. Um, the way that he carries himself, he was able to do some special things. And, um, yeah, obviously that's that was a big part of me wanting to come back is, like, I want to surround myself with guys like that and, you know, guys that kind of galvanize, you know, a football team. And I think he absolutely does that. So, um, yeah, man, it's a great time to be a Texan. And, and I'm, I'm super excited that, you know, I'm back. Well, except for when you guys play at Colts, obviously. Go ahead, AJ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dalton. How are how early on did you know uh, that you made the right decision going to Houston? I know it's CJ's mm -hmm. first year, your first year there. Did you like? Obviously, you're hopeful, and you, you look around and say, "This looks like a great opportunity." But then, when did you know, like, okay, that we are a legit squad. We have a team, and we can we can go far. Um, honestly, maybe like week three, four. Like we knew we had a pretty good team. Um, we just hadn't put it all together yet. Um, but just when you see, again, going back to CJ, just when you see a quarterback that's able to make every single throw again and again and again, um, you know, and able to kind of stay humble about it and, you know, realize that, you know, he's not quite all the way there and maybe his footwork or, like, maybe he could have gotten the second read a little faster. You know what I mean? It's like through all the success that he was having, he kept going back to, like, okay, like, how, how can I get better, though? Like, how much, you know, better can I be? And I think everybody kind of saw that. Um you know, and I think we started to stack a couple games, especially late in the season. And it was, you know, maybe week 12, 13, and we're staring at a playoff opportunity. And we're like, you know, this is this is it. Like, this is our shot. Like, we got to, you know, put one together and, you know, make a push. And so um, I think early seeing CJ's success is when I first noticed it. But I think, you know, as the year went on and we were able to stack games, like – that's when teams get dangerous. And, I mean, we rolled into the playoffs hot and, you know, you know, got the first game done and then ran into a really good Ravens team. But, um, again, I'm excited for the future. I'm excited for, you know, the core of young players that we have. 
Um, and I think the sky's the limit. Yeah, you talk about first-year quarterback, first year in Houston. There's a first-year head coach down there, too. And, and I think that's why the expectations were nowhere near what the outcome of your season ended up being. That place was... I mean, you know this as you were looking around. I guess you knew the people, but just outside looking in, it was like that place is probably two, three years away. You know, they had two picks in the first three picks last year. They made a trade, mm -hmm. obviously, but, like, you earned one of those particular picks. And all of a sudden, it's just like, boom. And then you you listen to D'Amico talk, and it's like, oh, my God, this is everything that I would want in a head coach in the NFL. Describe him, obviously, after playing somewhere else so you have a little bit of perspective of what it could potentially be like. And why do you think D'Amico has had the success this quickly being a head coach of an NFL team? Guys just believe in him, man. Like, I don't, I'm, I don't know if you guys have talked to him a bunch. Oh, like, yeah. the first thing that always oh. jumps out about D'Amico is, like, dude, his energy. He's got, like, an infectious energy. Like, he's always upbeat. He's always, like, he's almost, like, bouncing when he walks around. You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, just talking with him, you know, when I first came in the building, I kind of I kind of gravitated towards that. And um, when you have a guy like that leading an NFL team, I think guys gravitate towards that as well. And um, I mean, he did a fantastic job all year, man. Like, yeah, you know, he, I'd say, he, he, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <Golden. laughs> he, uh, you know, he, he listened. And I think for a first year head coach, like being able to kind of sit back and, you know, take in some of the some of the feedback that you know players give him whether that player be a rookie or you know a 12-year guy um you know as a as a player you really feel like he cares and he listens um and just the amount of respect that you know I had for who he was kind of coming in like I knew he was going to be a good coach it was just you know can he be a good head coach and I think he's you know he's going to cement himself as one of the great head coaches around the league going forward um, but man, he's, he's so fun to play for. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a blast. Yeah. Too much fun. Maybe the, the um, <laughs> the history books obviously are riddled with failures at head coach in the NFL, not an easy job, especially like former players, you know, cause you gotta have, hold a people accountable. You gotta have this. There's a chance you can let things get away. It's like seemingly when he was at the Niners, everybody loved him. And that's why he got the head coaching opportunity. And then he gets a chance to do it, flips a team around, a whole city, flips a whole yeah. city around. Now, obviously a lot of pieces to that, but he was the head coach when it takes place. There's other teams now that are gonna hope like, you saw what the Houston Texans were able to do. Oh, yeah. You saw, like, mm -hmm. that's, like, what people's hope are. Cincinnati a few years back, they mm -hmm. go from four wins yep. to go to the Super Bowl. There's been, like, a couple of those yeah. riddled throughout. And uh, for me, as a Colts fan, that sucks. Yeah. You know, because I mm -hmm. thought there was at least five, ten years here. Sure. Yeah. Jags uh, trying, are trying one to of figure, those teams, too. Yeah, exactly. Jacksonville <laughs> was able to figure it out. So the AFC South all of a sudden becomes a monster. And we're very thankful that you're going to be here for at least three more years on your <laughs> on your new deal. But when you're talking about playing for the Houston Texans, you played for the Cowboys for five years, right? You were there for five years. If our math is right on Wikipedia, it's always hard to do the time. <laughs> Was it five seasons? Yeah. yeah, five. Okay, and I never played for the Cowboys. Pac-Man did play for the Cowboys, but we kind of get like displayed and showcased what it's like to play for the Cowboys. You're on national TV every single week. Practice facility is filled with, you know, people paying for tickets for practice. Like, it's yep. it's a whole different world, yeah. allegedly. Yep. Have you no, enjoyed? Have, <clears throat> like, obviously, you enjoyed your time in Dallas. I'm not going to say that. But, like, yep. when you get to Houston, is it vastly different than your time in Dallas whenever you're talking yeah, about all sure. the off the field? Is it? Is that real? Is that yeah. Real? No, it, it's that was one of the first things that kind of stuck out to me is, like, it feels like much more, I don't want to say college because it's not, but like the focus is just football. You know what I mean? And, and <laughs> going back and like telling some people like how kind of being around the Cowboys, like practice facility and, you know, game day, um, describing some of the interactions and stuff that you see on a day to day basis, like surprise a lot of people. They're like, holy crap, like that actually happens like at a practice facility and like, you know, it's just you think it's normal, and then you come to a place like, like this. Like what? Like what? Like what? You don't have to out anything, but like, what are you? What no, dude, it's just like you. There's people literally going on tours um, while you're listening in the weight room, and they've got like a one way. They've got a one way mirror for people to like look at. Like it's literally, it's a zoo, dude. <laughs> there's people <laughs> tapping on the glass, like trying to get people's attention as they're doing, you know, power cleans or whatnot, and it's just it's different and, and i mean that's the brand that they've built that's you know that's what jerry jones likes that's the way that they run things and there's nothing wrong with that it's just you know you don't realize like how many you know eyeballs and how 
how much that can maybe, you know, distract from, you know, stuff just in the locker room being in the facility until you go somewhere else and you're like, holy crap, like, dude, there's none of that. Like, this is, you know, also a really well run um, organization in Houston. And I think that was one of the things that kind of scared me about like leaving Dallas the most is like, I wasn't sure what another organization would kind of feel like. And dude, I got here and it was like, this place is a well-oiled machine. Like it's, you know, coaching staff, the coaching changes. I can't speak to the previous stuff, but like the strength staff is phenomenal. The training staff is unbelievable. This has been the most like trainers that I've ever seen on a staff and they take really amazing care of the players. Um, the nutrition staff is phenomenal. The, the chefs, they like, they came in and they poached like five of the best chefs in the Houston area and they paid them a bunch more. And they're like, come, you know, come hang out and cook for us. Smart. And so it's like everything that they kind of do is really top notch and, you know, not being sure of like how another organization would kind of be run leaving Dallas. Like I was so happy and like, no, so surprised. everything you're saying is wrong. Remember Houston was a dumpster <laughs> fire. Oh yeah. Dude, Houston Come was to a... Houston, baby. No, yeah, you didn't relax. <laughs> you didn't really... That sounds amazing. That sounds like an NFL, like how it's supposed to be. These NFL yeah. PA report cards just uh, came yeah. out. And there's like some places getting like F minuses on facility. I assume there's some ownership learning about how their team feels about them where they're like, oh shit. We're in the middle of a dynasty run. I'm holding the Super Bowl first. You guys give me an F minus. Yeah. What the hell? What are we yeah. even talking about? I got a six bedroom suite in the stadium. What yeah. we, that's pretty cool. What are, that's cool. <laughs> Isn't that cool. It's like that, those things start happening. So listening yeah. to you describe what Houston is, like I think a lot of fans just automatically assume that's how it is everywhere. It's like, no. That is not how no. it is everywhere. Not that it isn't yeah. in Dallas. I assume Dallas is like that. But I think, like, outside looking in of the Houston Texans organization, hearing you say that, there's probably a lot of people like, damn, yeah. I, did, I, did not, I did not expect that. Uh, speaking of the Houston yeah. Texans coaching staff that you talked about being at top of the line, strength coach is a big one. The guy calling the shots is as well. Go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Dalton, what, uh, what's your relationship like with Coach Slowick and, and how jacked up are you? Because, like, you know, obviously when you guys kind of went on that run into the playoffs and everything, his name started getting put out there for head coaching jobs. I don't know if he actually took any interviews. He might have had one or two. But how excited are all you guys uh, that he's coming back? And why is he like? Why is it so fun to play with with him? And and I guess what did he do to kind of? Because you're obviously good in Dallas, but same thing. You hit the ground running, and he kind of feels like he further unlocked your potential this year. Yeah, no doubt, dude. Um the biggest thing that jumped out to me right away about Bobby was just his knowledge of the game. Like a lot of times you've got OCs and offensive minded guys that come from quarterback rooms that are purely dictated on like passing game and understanding, you know, passing concepts and how we can take advantage of that. Dude, one of the first meetings that we had was we all sat down and like Bobby broke down like Lyman's footwork on how to block outside zone and like where to put your hands and like so where to put your hat. And it's like, this guy is like, he, he not only understands like all the passing stuff, but it's like he's breaking down the run game stuff and like the jobs of like the offensive lineman. And he's telling him exactly how to do it and exactly how he wants it. And then he's breaking down the backtrack of exactly where he kind of feels like this should go. And it's like when we're in the room watching these plays and he's able to like articulate just exactly how he envisions and he's able to communicate with everybody. Like that was my like, oh shit moment of like, dude, this guy is. He's really, he's really knowledgeable. Um, How did he not get a head coaching you know, job? Why is he still there? Why, why, why is it? Why is he still in the? AFC I don't know, South? man, but I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad he's still there. Um, watching you guys, you know, obviously, it was awesome. the, yeah, yeah, it was awesome yeah, watching. Team. It was explosive. It was explosive. It was smart. It was cerebral. You still ran the rock like mm -hmm. the, your offense was awesome to watch. Now, obviously, CJ. It had the greatest rookie season in the history, but it's like yep. Slowick, this name all of a sudden comes out of nowhere. It's like, oh, football genius. Is that that's what we're seeing? That's yep. what we're dealing with here? I mean, I'm not gonna say it. Like, I'm not gonna put, you know, I'm not gonna jinx anything, but like, dude, Bobby's a hell of an offensive coach, man. He's a he's a great offensive mind. And um, I'm excited too because, you know, there was a lot of trust between, you know, Bobby and CJ being two first year guys. Um and I think that, you know, that relationship's only going to grow. And I think, you know, Bobby's going to grow a lot in his in his play calling. And um, I'm excited to see kind of what he comes up with in year two now that we're not starting from ground zero, now that we're able to kind of, you know, start at, you know, the, the fifth level of, of offense, you know, going into year two and yeah, not having to. 
<laughs> we get a dog. Not having to go back to basics, so that'll be that'll be nice, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun fun run. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's gonna be a blast. Um, this sucks, you, CJ. Yeah, right. Every time he comes on the show, like, oh, that's what I would like a franchise quarterback yeah. to be, mm-hmm. stud. And you're Dalton talk about the whole organization as a whole. That's not who the Texans are supposed to be. No, that's but, not how this is supposed to go. But they are. And we got Anthony Richardson. Yeah, we got Shane Steichen. True. Right. We're supposed to. This is what's. This is our time. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then now, the big bad wolf is seemingly down in Houston against us. And he, you guys walked right into the lot house and broke our halt, hearts, Dalton. You know that. Just broke our hearts that last game. Dude, what a game! That was such a fun game. Like Strap. legit environment, like hostile. Oh yeah, that was so fun. Okay, <laughs> like, okay, okay. Those right. are the games. Those are the games. Like why you play ball? Like that's that's great. Oh, so you so did. We it. can talk about Indy if you want to talk about Indy. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Indy. Obviously, I have massive respect for the Houston Texans organization. We have a better relationship with the Houston Texans, seemingly, than <laughs> any organization, any organization yeah, yeah. in the entire NFL. But it's all from a matter of respect. I love playing down there. That was the loudest stadium that I'd ever played in. I didn't get a chance to play in Seattle, but every time we played the Houston Texans, it was normally for the AFC South. It was normally on like Thursday night football, and the Houston Texans. Texans fans were the loudest. And J.J. Watt yeah. was doing all his ridiculous fucking shit. You know, mm-hmm. all of his shit he was doing. The dancing, the swatting, the catching, <laughs> the tight end, what? the sacking, the whole thing. So it was a great environment. C.J. said the same thing you did. You felt it a little bit in Indianapolis, huh? It was a good environment up there? It, yeah. yeah. It was sweet. It was, it was awesome. It was the playoff environment, dude. Like, it's, it's a lot of you know, it was, it was fun. It was, like, fun to be a part of. Everybody likes to, you know, go to an, an opposing team city and, like, feel like you know, everybody's against you. That's like half the fun of, of playing the NFL is being the villain sometimes. And um, we definitely felt like that in Indy. And then what? And then we won. Good, AJ. You got a question for fucking uh, Dalton Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dalton, stay, staying in line with what you're saying and going into Indy and getting a big win like that. What is it? What do you think it is about athletes, about teams? Like, why does it feel so good to go into somebody else's house, beat them down? And then just pack the bags and go home with just the people that you came with. What what is it about that? Why does that build? You feel Dude, like that builds the, the team together? It, yeah, I mean it's the competitive switch that all professional athletes have. It's how you got here. It's proving somebody wrong. It's going against expectations. It's coming into a place where everybody thinks that you're not going to do shit, and you come out with a dub. It's you know it's all of those factors kind of into one. And um, just again going back to that competitive drive, like. It's that's half the fun, man. Like winning is winning is fun, but like, you know, making somebody else lose sometimes, especially if it's a rival, like that's you know just as fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was a blast. It, it, it was so uh, it was a real good time. We were a part of that hostile environment, and watching your team was like CJ was just like this the whole time. Yeah, you know? no, he's he's very he's very level headed. So young. How are you? Yeah. You talk shit from Utah? No, right? I'm, I'm like I'm like that. I'm I'm level headed too. I'm just like him. If, there, if now if somebody like is talking, like I'll I'll talk back. But like I don't got I don't got a ton of ammunition in the tank. Oh. Like I don't want to talk to a D end, and all of a sudden now this freaking three hundred pound guy who runs a four four is like, you know, now he decides to turn it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't. Is that right? <laughs> Oh, you know, I you know I, I pick I pick my battles. <laughs> you went to Stanford. What's your major in Stanford? Uh, it's called SCS, but it was like game design, dude. So it was Ooh. like a, it's kind of like a little athlete major. You pick your own classes, and I picked all mine around video game design. Like grandma's boy, in the, is that yeah. what? Yeah, coding or what? Yeah, like coding. Yeah, like making you know working in Unity, um, working in some game engines, making games. Jeez. I did some VR projects. But yeah, that's like kind of what I centered myself. I want to do something in gaming whenever I'm done playing, hopefully in 10 years. And You're coding uh, video games? That's what you do? That's what you're doing? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's like, that's what I did in college. I haven't coded a video game in a long time, but like, yeah, that's kind of what got me into it. We're talking like the, yeah. Yeah. the like, Pong, what, Pong, 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 like that type of game? Are you coding these ones where? I actually, I actually did code, um, I don't think it was Pong. It was another. It was another like simple game like that, Brick where breaker. like you have to you have to make you know Absolutely. the basic game, dude. I, it was a game like Pong, but yeah, I've so, coded I've coded stuff like that. So you love video games? That's why you got into that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Which, which game are we playing? Is Fortnite dead? Is that still happening? Nah, it's still going hell. Dude, it's funny. Me, so I built my wife a computer and we play Fortnite together. Oh, so, did, yeah. Did, where'd, you, where, where'd you meet the wife at? 
uh, in the Bay. In the Bay. Yeah, she went to San Francisco State. I was down at Stanford. So. She's a gamer as well? She, I've, I've made her a gamer. Okay, yeah. so that was a part of the whole she, thing. I mean, I mean, dude, she's watching Fortnite streams on TikTok now. So, <laughs> Are, Do you stream? Are you good? She's a bit. Yeah, I stream. I do. I'm going to start streaming here in the next couple of weeks. But, um, but yeah, I like to play. I'm, I'm a gamer for sure. Are we good or is, like, Ninja just beating your ass? Like, if you were to get in Oh, dude, Ninja's a pro. Like, that's like, you know, Joe Schmo off the street talking shit to a Patrick <laughs> McQueen. You know? Okay, so you suck. <laughs> just tell me you suck, though. You suck at Fortnite? Do you, you play Fortnite? I don't play video games, bro. I play video games. <laughs> <laughs> no, I suck. I suck at video games. I am like actually the worst player. Do you remember? Uh, I signed up for a Madden tournament. Yeah. And <laughs> Katie Nolan took it to you. Beat yeah, me dude. by fifty. We were even cheating. We did the whole like I was using a fake controller in the uh, fourth quarter. <laughs> yep. Ty was using the actual controller. Couldn't come. I am so bad at video. Yeah. I am the worst video game player of all time. I don't know why my thumbs just can't. You Golf. Know, I just can't do it. Dude, you've been a kick you've been a kicker your whole career, man. Like Yeah, a lot of video game nerds in the kicking community, Dalton. <laughs> in that in that kind of like in I'm saying it makes it makes sense you got no like hand eye, it's all feet. Like Whoa. no hand eye. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's how I need to view it. When I'm playing video games, I need to view it as this is athlete, this is hand eye coordination. Yeah, yeah, yeah you do. Because yeah. the only thing that happens is my thumbs, especially those like the shooters, these ones. Mm -hmm. I get sick watching me. Like I'm like oh, and then I can't find the person. How much? How many hours are we playing video games? Legit? Are you playing in season? In, in the so in season, not a whole lot. Like I'll get you know maybe an hour or two. Like what the fuck? The we just saw your setup right here. Holy yeah, damn! That's oh one of his goodness. theaters, Pat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's a. Uh, that's that's like my little gaming command center. Wow. I got two PCs mounted underneath. I use one for streaming, one for gaming. You built you that built computer? Um, yeah, I built both of them. How many uh, Bill uh, Pita uh, yeah, RPM uh, Pita's? Uh, uh, how how many? Uh, uh, how fast is your rig? rig. Lot, 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 how fast is your rig, dude? <laughs> yeah. How fast is the rig? <laughs> it's fast. And nowadays, it's not necessarily about the speed. It's about you know how many cores you got. And yeah. How much you know VRAM you have in your graphics card and whatnot? Oh, the VRAM card. is so real. That is the yeah, the VRAM and the gigahertz. <laughs> yep. Bill. Wow. Yeah, I've been talking about VRAMs for the last couple weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. You get a I'm, at, I'm at my. Go ahead. I'm at the Houston setup right now, so I have I have another one down here. Oh, go full. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're uh, we're not. We gotta go. Can you turn that phone sideways? Oh. Turn that some bitch sideways. Yeah, I got you. You got that massager thing I see to the right. Sorry, what? Excuse me? What's that? <laughs> the real deal. Go to your right, right there. That thing. Like massage your back. Yeah, I got the little Theracane. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's because you're gaming. You don't have good posture, Dalton? You got good posture while you're gaming over there or no? Dude, I need a freaking Herman Miller deal. I use Herman Miller chairs only. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Shout out Herman no. Miller. Good. Yeah. yeah. Those chairs are Come on, good. Herman Miller. Hook, hook, hook a yeah, guy so, up. So am I way too. Well, yeah. Yeah. On, no, not too many. We've done, this, <laughs> yeah. we've done this whole song and dance with the gaming chairs before, and yeah. we ended up with 75 gaming chairs Game, in our office. Hey, we need them. Give away. Just couldn't give them away. Every, which we are very grateful. Thank you yes. to all the gaming chair companies that make the same exact gaming chair and put their name on it as if they're different. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate them for doing that. But it takes up so much. We oh. had to get a if storage. you have high chairs, set them our way, too. Yeah, yeah we uh -huh. can get higher chairs. Yeah. Tried to give higher. those gaming chairs away. Couldn't even give them away because we had so many. It was impossible to ship. It was cost us $700 <laughs> to ship these things to people that were <laughs> yeah. winning them. It's like, yeah, thanks for the chair, but it, they're a real deal. How, much, how You're parking in there off-season. How long? Yeah, dude. Okay, so when the season ended and we got done with the exit interviews, I woke up at like 730 in the morning just because you know that's i'm still on the in-season schedule and i didn't get off the game until 3 30 in the morning damn so i, I went from 7 30 to 3 30 like Dalton. straight got door down no breaks like, where'd you pee dude, it was yeah where'd you go right down the hall come on now <laughs> like, oh, so you get up to go pee and this ain't, this ain't the old school world of warcraft days dude <laughs> did <laughs> so you play wow you played wow back in the day I played, yeah, yeah. Ooh. And you were just peeing your pants the whole time. Had a diaper on. Board depends while you're playing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 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 no. Got a little you bit did, better Dalton. hygiene. I can tell you didn't. Mm -hmm. I can tell you board depends. <laughs> Can't you, pull off. You peed your pants while you're playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> do you do any? So you're Wait. you're a gamer, big gamer. That's the hobby. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's what I want to do when I'm done for sure. Professional to build, but do you want to get into the professional side of it or no? 
Yeah, you know, I'd be open to it. I don't know if I'd be down, you know, doing the whole design process. It's, dude, it's it's a long time. Games are in development for some games are in development for decades. Like, you know, World of Warcraft has been in development for thirty years. It feels like. Well, when's GTA uh, coming out? Aren't, aren't they yeah, supposed 20, to twenty five? Yeah. No. next year. You play that game? You play GTA? I do. Yeah, I do. I played that on my phone on a flight that I had no internet for five and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Best. Is GTA on your phone? Yeah, I didn't know it was possible I'm, either. I'm learning. I'm learning. I need that. All of them. <laughs> I went to school at Stanford mm -hmm. for video games. Yep. I actually coded GTA on your phone. There you go. Smart. Yeah. This is a good move by you guys. Thank you, Dalton. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, let's get back to football. Pac-Man has a question for you, Dalton. Uh, Doug, my undercover dog, dog. Tank dog. Dale, um, how's, it, how's it playing with the younger receivers over there? Mm -hmm. And uh, if y'all could do one thing to get better on the offense, what would it be? Bro, first of all, Tank is a freaking beast, bro. Like, everybody kind of saw it in, you know, OTAs when he first got out. Like, I don't think I've seen a dude being able to, like, stop that fast so quick. And, like, you know, he, he looks a little – you know, unassuming because he's a little undersized compared to some of these other receivers um, in the league. But like, good luck guarding that guy in man coverage, bro. Like, he's he's a dog. Um, and I think you know, being around young cats, even like Nico, like, dude, it's it's so fun being around guys that are just starting to see the fruits of their labor pay off and are able to go into big time games and make big time game changing plays, like. You know the 75-yard touchdown against Indianapolis in Week right. 18 um, to Nico Collins, um, but just being around guys like that, man, it's it's infectious. Honestly, he um, made other plays too, Dalton, throughout the entire year. Oh, he did. Year. He did. That that was just the one that you know was fresh in my mind. First play. Um, and I think you know having having a group like that and a young, hungry core of like young receivers is. Is valuable and i think you know the biggest step for us i think going forward is being able to get the run game going consistently um so you know obviously that that starts with you know the guys playing and um i'm excited to to get back in the lab and take a look at that and take a look at stuff that we could have done better and i think you know when you give cj a, a very good run game like the pass game is going to open up even more for those guys and so um for me like i think it definitely starts with the run game are you uh i i, I didn't watch enough film you know, I see you make ridiculous catches and all that stuff. Are we hurry? Are we? Are we block? Are we hurry? Yeah, we're, oh yeah, yeah. We're <laughs> we're moving people. Yeah, oh yeah. We're we're grind. We're we're running. Feet. Yeah, no, come on, run, run the film. Somebody pull the film up. I don't know there. if we have any of those film. They don't have boring ass blocks in the highlight. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. That is. But is that a big part no. of it? That's a big part of it, I assume, as a tight Yeah, end. no, for sure. In this game, dude, it's it's the San Francisco offense, dude. Like George Kittle's made a, a living mm -hmm. in this scheme, and so you're definitely asked to do stuff like that. And you know, that's something that I I love to do, and I take a, you know I take a lot of pride in. Um, I'm not saying it's easy work, dude. Like again, sometimes you're going against those big DNs that you know run four fours and are 300 pounds. Like it's it's a challenge blocking Miles Garrett in the playoffs. Like, you know, and so I think, you know, you guys did it pretty well. that being able to do that, though, Thanks. sets you apart. Obviously, George Kittle's made a, a living off of being, you know, probably the most dynamic, com complete, you know, guy in terms of blocking, receiving, being a downfield threat, but also being able to hold his, his own at the point of attack and pass blocking, run blocking. This offense is basically theirs. It's a, it's a version of theirs. And so we're asked to do all the same stuff. How hard was it to learn the offense when you get there? And all these offenses now are kind of – they're kind of. do you know what other teams are doing? Like when you watch them, yeah. you're like, oh, this is yeah. probably going to be this play now because that's kind of what it's becoming, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's funny, like watching SF this year, they played a lot of the same opponents that we did. So, like, we'd watch their film and it's like – I'd see a play and I'm like, I know exactly what that play call was. Like, I, I could literally call that play right now. Why um, does this offense work so well? Why does it work so well? Dude, that, that's a good question. That's why I don't coach. Um, that's why I just uh, – <laughs> that's why I listen. <laughs> hey, hey, tell the Colts right now why you're offense. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, we, need to hear, we need to hear this entire thing. Go ahead, AJ. Yeah, well, yeah. When, you, uh, when you let me know, uh, let me know. You're a fullback <laughs> when here. When you find out. I guess you're a fullback here. Fullback. Oh! Who's that against that Pac? On, Who's that against – might have put that on his, his uh, film. Yeah, it could have been on In the Trenches. You like playing fullback, Dalton? You like getting back there in old school? Dude, that was like that was like a one-off, like, you know, motion to a different spot. You know, we weren't sure if they were going to, you know, adjust a certain way. And 
man, I was so stoked because you know you get out in the open field and you see a you know like a smaller, lighter body. Please. It's like okay, like it's it's me and you. Pac and then man, the stand them up, Pac. <laughs> man. Square them up, Pac. <gasps> I mean, that's um... he sent it back to his buddies. Yeah, yeah, he, he cut him. Take the blocker, get out of the way. Fullback no longer leading anything. Yep. He's out of there. He's on top of me, mm -hmm. but he's definitely mm -hmm. out of the way. That's going to happen. You're going to get God every once in a while. Uh, yeah. Tone Diggs has a question for you, and I would advise you to answer this one good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? Because this is this is a topic of discussion everywhere it right is. now. It's a big topic of, of discussion everywhere and on the internet. Your former quarterback has decided to go from the beard to the goatee. I don't know if you've seen Dak's goatee <laughs> recently. I wanted to let, wanted to see what your thoughts are on Dak going to the goatee, if that's like an evil empire type move for him, if you know. And are you thinking about doing the same? Yeah. Ooh. Am, I, am I thinking about going to the goatee? No, I'll leave that to the to the guys that can, can pull it off well. Nah, dude, like, great. Grow it, bro. <laughs> like, he's stepping into a different role. Like, he's a, he's a dad now. Like, new look, great. I'm all for it. You got mustache? It looks like you got a pretty... Yeah, you yeah, should do it. Yeah, dude, I keep I keep the mustache going. I haven't shaved in a few days, but usually I, I leave, I leave the mustache a little bit. What are you? Scottish? Irish? Yep, Scotch-Irish. Scotch-Irish oh. and German. Oh, and German. You're, you're the whitest of the white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't. I can't hold a tan to save my fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially when you're gaming for twenty fucking hours. Go, go no, see the, blue the light. sun. The blue light's great. It gives you a little blue light tan. It, it looks really good. When's the next stream? Can we watch? Where is it? Yeah, it's on. Uh, it's on my Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Schultz. We're still doing Twitch. Okay. This. Oh yeah. This is new to me because gaming world. That's how I learned of Twitch. Was like gaming world. Mm -hmm. And my brother used to be, and I assume he still is, very good gamer. So I've been watching people play video games for a long time. Him and his friends have played. Pretty entertaining. Like if you're like paying attention and everything like that. That was before people could do the internet stuff. And then I get bored. I go outside. I come back. Still watch them play and everything. That becoming a full business made sense to me immediately. Like yes, this would make a yep. lot of sense for people to watch. There's action, there's sport, there's personality. But then didn't Twitch just... Yeah, Twitch lost a bunch of people. A bunch of people went to YouTube, and then there's other ones now, like Rumble. And, yeah, I got uh, Kick. Stream. Kick? That's Kick. Kick's brand new, right? That's the brand new? Yeah, I, don't, I, I haven't followed they along signed enough. Signed a bunch of guys. What's that? I haven't, I haven't checked out, to be honest. They signed a bunch of talent. They signed a bunch of people to... You follow along with all that shit, though? Obviously, you're keeping... I mean, my, my timeline, when I'm on social media in the offseason, like, my timeline's kind of full of that, because that's... That's just I follow streamers. I follow a bunch of gaming stuff, and so like all that kind of news is. Oh, dude, you look. You know, so it's cool. out there. Nice. Look how cool you look. Wait, is that you? <laughs> Wait, that. That's not you. That's not that's you. That's not you. That is. Oh, that's not your cat. There's no way. Your cat yeah. and Dalton. <laughs> you were. See the bicep veins. There's bicep veins in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, enjoy the hell out of yourself. We will follow along. Congrats on the new deal. Can't wait to see what you do with your rig. Yeah. With you. your setup with the yeah. new deal. Uh, are you in any businesses? All you stand for people always have like side businesses. You uh, you do any of that, or are you just gaming? Yeah, I do. Illuminati. I do, but ga gaming's kind of my what? thing. But I got some other, I got some other side businesses that I keep kind of low key. But yeah. Go to bird. All right. What the hell? All right. All right. Sorry, buddy. I got fun asking for you. Hey, Traveling well, with those elites. Yeah, well, that's Stanford up there. That is, mm -hmm. that is the smart. Griff Great Whalen, Kobe Fleener, Andrew Luck, Bye. Henry Anderson, David Perry. Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. McCaffrey. Sure. Yeah. Harbaugh. You know, all the boys, all the salty fifth years. Those those guys were like, some of those guys were salty fifth years when I came in as a freshman. <laughs> I couldn't imagine Henry Anderson and Perry. Like, yeah. Bro, like the saltiest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bet you that was good times there. Great crew. Yeah. Good people. Yeah. Hey, just like you, congrats. We appreciate you. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on. You guys Please. have a good one. Hey, you too, ladies and gentlemen. Don't show up. Yeah, don't Guy's a fucking wizard. Yeah. Colts are so he built fucked. those rigs. Dude, he built a computer. Like that's what I'm saying. Like I guess people build awesome. computers. That is a hobby. Yeah. Oh yeah. My brother's built a computer. Bill's built a computer. Mm -hmm. Like I know that people do it. Is I, it because it's faster if you build it and you get you can juice you it up and make components. it great? Yeah, because mm -hmm. you know awesome. the gaming systems, you're kind of beholden to them how they did. So then people introduced okay. the computers, and then the computers obviously, well, is this a good did Dell build a good enough computer for me right. to fucking... <laughs> yep, exactly. No. You know I mean? So then they start building computers just for the... I think. I'm not... I'm yes. not 
I just kind of yeah. watched along with other people. They're building these computers strictly so that they can fucking crush mm -hmm. in these video mm -hmm. games. Yeah. And it's quite an advantage yeah. over others that don't have the computers, you know, and you can get caught up. You can, get, you can run into a buzzsaw one. You can bring a knife, base gas console, mm -hmm. to a fucking gunfight, which yeah. is one of these computers that has been built in the basement somehow and is at mock speed versus what yours is. Yeah, that's why it matters more now because, like, it used to just be like, you could only play with other computers or, like, PlayStation. You'll, you can only play with PlayStation. Now everyone's playing together. In the lobby. Everybody's in everyone's the lobby. Everyone's in the lobby. In the, lobby. In the same, in the same everybody's lobby. In the lobby. <laughs> everybody's in the lobby. Yeah, someone should bring Bill some new shorts because during that conversation, Conversation, I assume he splued oh, eight no, no. to he ten times. He excused himself to go jerk off in the bathroom. Okay. He's fine. Oh, Smart nice. man. No, I work, Bill. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Let's make sure we remember that. That's mm -hmm. two days in a row because he also did it during the murderer conversation yesterday. Did anybody watch the Love Kill Stalk murders thing? Uh, <laughs> no, I no. feel like I watched it like yesterday. Did you see yeah, this? So <laughs> I got it all yesterday. New episode of Good Doctor out. <laughs> Craziest white of all time. Not like serial killers. <laughs> kind of put them out. Different category. She could have got there. She could have got to. We don't know. We have no idea what's. They stopped her too soon. Bingo. She was a good craziest person of all time. Mm -hmm. Worthy of a watch, I think. Okay. Worthy of a watch. Also, feels like Dynasty. Mm -hmm. A lot of mixed reviews coming in. No, yeah. Ty loves it. I've enjoyed it? it quite a bit. Yes, I've watched. I've watched at least an episode or two episodes every single night this week. Okay, but people are saying this is a, no, this is a Bill Belichick ain't worth a shit docu series. <laughs> Kind of, and right, and that I what mean, people are saying. Yeah, uh, even just to what Lombardi. I love Bill Belichick. I am yeah. a Bill Belichick fan. It I think is, I've proven that it publicly is, and it is everything. Definitely a craft heavy. Like, yes, they. I could see why if you're a Patriots fan, it makes it. I wouldn't call it a hit piece, but I could see why Slanted. People say like, oh, this is basically set up to just give Kraft all of the credit for this and Bill very little. But the thing that, like, the interviews that they do, like, the talking head interviews, like, I could give a shit about that stuff and, like, what Bob Kraft's son's saying. Like, I don't... Whatever. Steven? The, Jonathan. the footage they have from the locker rooms after wins and stuff like that from the time and seeing Belichick, like, address the team and shit like that. Like, that stuff is awesome because that's the type of stuff that I just assumed we would never, ever see. Yeah. What NFL films? Uh, I believe NFL films has kind of distanced themselves. Yeah, they did. Uh, from the documentary because of the fact that, in to Ty's point, like it's not just hit, crushing Bill, but it, it's slanted against him. Definitely. Like, there, there's no, there's no denying that. As a Patriots fan, sure, but like there's no denying that when you watch an NFL films, allegedly has kind of just been like, yeah, that's not. We didn't do this. Like this slanted is slanted against just Bill or the Patriots in general. Bill, I mean, no, Bill. It, it's not it, anyone who says it's slanted against the Patriots. Like that's wrong. They go through the Patriots, okay. you know, scandals and stuff. That's not slanted against them. That's what happened. Yeah. But like the the way they're talking about it, especially when it comes to Bill's involvement, uh, it, it is slanted against him. All right. I will say one of the best clips too is after the undefeated season. Bill, uh, Bill gives a speech. And it's pretty cool to see that speech, and then when Tom comes up and does a speech after that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bill Belichick, greatest coach and GM of all time. Yeah. Tom, I hope, I hope that doesn't get forgotten. Tom it says will. a lot of good things it about will. him. When Tom gets his talking head segments, he says a lot of good things about Bill, how much Bill helped him. Yep. And then uh, they talked about how much fun they had during the uh, undefeated season because they could tell Bill was like, because of all the Spygate stuff, Bill was determined to run it up on teams and, and just really drive oh, it nice, home and, nice and reinforce fuck everybody. It. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, in Man in the Arena, they mentioned that, too, because they did the same thing. A couple guys interviewed each episode, and uh, I believe Tom actually is the one that said it. He said, like, after Spygate happened, they were like, oh, you guys think you guys think this is why we're good at football? And then they scorched earth 18-1. All right. Also, on the other side of that, Teddy Bruschi did drop a little bit nugget saying how, like, I think it was the defense maybe, but some of the guys were kind of pissed at Bill for for this whole Spygate thing getting out and becoming a story, and it was interesting. Did it feel like they were? Really? <laughs> maybe a little bit. Interesting. Maybe. Yeah. Is there a lot of this in there? A little. There's a tough a little. Go to the high horse barn. Election season's coming. Election <laughs> yeah. season's Can't wait. coming. Kraft's son is planted on a very high horse the entire time, I will say. I, and I, if they do an interview like this, is a camera angle like this on They, they do have to kind of, you know, yeah, refocus He's, he's the sitting on the horse mm -hmm. looking like that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it looks good now, but I'll tell you who will be public enemy number one if this does go south, and it will be <laughs> Jonathan Kraft. Thousand percent. Feels like it already is. No, no. If, if everything Listen goes to Connor talking in those eyes, the mm -hmm. way 
Oh no! Yeah. Is this how we want to do it? Yeah, they want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. this is, I mean, seriously though, think, think about the timing of this. Bill leaves, and that, and that is completely separate from the dynasty dot. But Bill leaves, and now you know Jonathan has a lot of say, and now it is going to be a, a big handprint on it. Obviously, Robert is a little older, so Jonathan he, he is the next one up. And if it goes bad, people will fucking hate Jonathan Kraft, especially after this. I already do. So you said you like Dynasty. I like the show as a whole. I think uh, Jonathan Kraft's kind of a piss ant. I kind of <laughs> I kind of tune out every time his talking head comes up. <laughs> One of my favorite. I mean, the Kraft you- family runs like the media thing. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to be on TV a lot probably going. Forward. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll have to figure it out. You know, I'll have to just stomach it, I suppose. But I I have not enjoyed his segments. Does he know that you think, or he think he kills it? Uh, well, there's one part where he has like a very like he he starts talking and he stops and he's like, I need to um, really figure out how I want to portray this and say this. I don't know why they left that in there, that, but they did. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this guy. <laughs> like, it's not as imp- this isn't as serious. I'm glad they left as it in though. It out. That's art. That's good, Matt uh, Haram uh, Hervé. Uh, Ham uh, ham check. Ham, the guy, ha- oh, yeah. ham check. Yep. Yeah. I had the ha. And then there was a middle, yeah. and then there's a the C- the CK. I C E C. Yeah, you ones. lose the hate your owner no matter what, though. That's not true. No one hates Bob Kraft right now. Nobody. Well, it's and we well because they have they've won so much. Oh yeah, sure. But if I mean if they if they lose, I don't think anybody year. hates Jim Irsay. Yeah, that's Colts fans. Yeah, they got a they got a ring though. Long time ago, huh? we haven't won anything in eight years. Right? Mm-hmm. We got banners. Remember when CJ Stroud too dropped many. that little nugget mm-hmm. at Radio Row? What was the last time Colts won? Yeah. He knew. That was oh, yeah. crazy. Oh, he, yeah. he knew the answer. Mm-hmm. And then we looked it up. It was like almost a decade ago. It's like, was it a decade oh, wow. ago? Holy fuck. <laughs> it's been a long time. Mm-hmm. Like, as these Houston Texans. Did you hear Dalton Schultz mm-hmm. talking? We plucked five <laughs> of the best chefs in Houston. Houston used to be known for restaurants. That's genius. Not anymore. Yeah. Like, that's, what Not Houston, anymore. that's what Houston's known for. Yeah, I just plucked five of the chefs. You guys feed Paid them more. Yeah. yeah. Six through ten. Could you imagine? Holy fuck, we're the top five. We run Houston, Houston yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Pump for those guys. Things have Girl. changed. We are now the top chefs in a city. The third largest, I believe. Third. Yeah. yeah. Houston. Yeah. Bigger than Chicago? No. No, no, no. So New York, LA, Chicago, Chicago Houston, Houston. But Houston. Houston's. Phoenix? Phoenix. Yeah. And then, yeah, and Houston's flying <clears> at the board. And then Pittsburgh. Chicago might be going too. I don't think mm. Pittsburgh's in there. Columbus isn't either, so I don't even need to hear it, AJ. Boston's in there. I don't, Boston's small, too. It's top 10. Is it? I hope. I don't think so. <laughs> it's small. Boston is small. It, it is. No, it is a small. You go up, you, you think Boston's going to be bigger when you go up there. Absolutely. Personally. Yeah. Like, when I went up there, I was like, oh, this is, and it's like the size of Pittsburgh, it feels like. Bruce That's said 25. 25. Where's Pittsburgh? Where's Pittsburgh? Farther down. 68. Oh. Where's Des Moines? <laughs> Got to be up there somewhere. That's because did you know they only do the uh, they only do the inner city for the uh, Pittsburgh population, but not for Houston. They do the entire because Houston. No, yes. saying like you know, Indiana, hour and a half you know, tip to tip. You yeah. know, Indiana, like where I live, counts as Indianapolis. That Plum does not count as Pittsburgh's population. That's same as Houston, though. Really? That's what I was. Uh, What's that all about? Why is that not? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. One five two three nine Allegheny County. I'm telling you, Atlanta, that's Pittsburgh. Why, why is why is Atlanta at forty nine? How is that right? Thirty eight. Tampa's at forty nine, I think. Thirty eight. I mean, yeah. yeah. Colorado Springs is bigger than you telling me. Columbus, Verizon. Like Ohio, Atlanta's, is Atlanta's than, probably. Yeah, what is this? Atlanta's this list is a lie. Oh, Miami yeah, is forty four. Where's Victoria, British Columbia? It's not America. This is, There's Wachita. Wachita's at fifty. <laughs> what a moment. I can't believe that happened this past year. <laughs> Can we get to Des Moines? Now I want to know. Nah, me too. Honolulu. Newark is, there's no way. Cincinnati, 64. About? Look at Cincinnati. <laughs> Pittsburgh, 60. Yeah. What is this? Li- what is the title of said list here? We're at 68. 2002 yeah, estimate. We're looking. Go down. Keep going down. Right place. Census. 2022 estimate. 2020 census. Change. 2020 land area. 2020 density. Huh? It's, if you scroll up a little, I think it has like the guidelines. Keep going. Right there. The table displays the city rank by population as of July 1st, 2022, and as estimated by the census, the city name 
the name of the state in which the city mm-hmm. lies, city population. But it's okay. also what's considered the city. Like, what are they? Well, that's what he was just it. talking about. Yeah, like, like Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta was what 60th. Yeah. Like, that's not. Right. Well, Houston though. Yeah. yeah. Like Houston. Houston is, is massive. Huge. Are they counting everybody that is in? Like Houston. This is, this is going saying Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska is a bigger city than Atlanta. So there it is. Can we can we somehow organize it as seven, the city land area, as of January one? <laughs> is there a way to? I don't think so. Doubt it. It's the population, right? I do like that they gave us the longitude and latitude. Yeah, land area. See if miles. If you click it's miles, really easy to read. Boom. Cambridge, Mass. Got you, bitch. Number one. <laughs> no, that's the smallest. <laughs> Boom. Fuck. Yeah, you're the tiniest. Yeah. Fuck. Daily city, though. Got no hope. Houston is the third biggest as Anchorage. far as, yeah, so far far as miles, square miles. Uh, Anchorage is huge. Yeah. Jesus. See how it, Indy, Indy, Indy is 10th as far as square miles. Yeah. Yeah, because we're in Indianapolis, but we are 25 what's Pittsburgh minutes ranks square downtown. Miles. Yeah, what's the square miles for uh, Pittsburgh? Just control F it. A lot of hills. Columbus, 28. Wow. There it is. Fuck. Right under Chicago. Las Vegas is bigger than... Shoot. See, Atlanta, they only did... It's 56 square miles. Or sorry, 50. Little Rock fucking bigger than Pittsburgh. Jeez, Pittsburgh's kind of... Uh, is it, uh, up, 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 up. No, I'm telling you, they only, they only do the... Dink. For, like, right in that... Why? I don't know. Cape Coral is bigger... North Las Vegas is bigger than Pittsburgh. Sacramento. Rio Lincoln, Rancho, Nebraska? Nebraska? Des Moines. Des Moines. Where the hey, fuck is out. Pittsburgh? Is, is it not even? <laughs> we must have There's passed it. Baltimore. We could control F. We must There's have passed Cincy, it. Cleveland. King Scra- no, it's coming. Cincy, Cleveland. Cedar Rapids. Wow. Two two cities in Iowa before Pittsburgh? Basically, All right, relax, relax. Everybody but Pittsburgh. Oh, Davenport, there's a third. Shout out to Seth Rollins. What the fuck? <laughs> Honolulu is bigger than Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, there it is. is. Look, Dayton's above it. Coming in at a strong 168. What the fuck, dude? What are we doing? Well, how are the people in charge of Pittsburgh like, you know what? Yeah, we want to count just the south side. I think that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? This is a this is a lie about everything list, Pittsburgh. Well, bigger Minneapolis. They don't want, they don't want more people coming, you know? It's like they, they don't want to spoil a good thing. Odessa. Jeez, that was in Anaheim. Good town, good town, good people. Oh, Carmel, Indiana, wow. Oh, There's Carmel. Boston. Carmel, Indiana. Nice. Oh, so basically they just <laughs> took that that size of an area. Told you, I told you, it's just like the downtown. Lord. I'm bummed out about that. <laughs> Don't be. <laughs> no, truth to I am. Hey, I'm bummed qu- out. Quantity over quality. That, Pac-Man. I'd flip it. Pac Man, you want to do a giveaway on this uh, big sports winner so, Wednesday? What do, you want Pac- to do? what do you want to do? You tell me. No, you tell well, we don't know where you're at right yep. now. Yeah. We don't know if you've been playing. Oh, oh, oh there oh, it is. Oh, there oh, it is. Poops. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa. All right. Oh, I haven't had somebody putt in a while. Long time. You have, you have five putts because there's five on this particular side of the green. Mm-hmm. Shout out to our friends at Top Golf for sending us more balls and things like that. Thank mm-hmm. you, Top Golf. I think they're with Callaway, right? I believe so, yes. Four point six billion or something like that. I saw something. Damn. Wow. Darius Butler sent me some Top Golf? Yeah, well, how much money Top Golf Callaway? Callaways. I think as a, I think they're really doing well. Congrats to them. Yeah. Congrats. And thanks to the Top Golf people for coming up with a brilliant concept for golf. Mm-hmm. And congrats to them for capitalizing on it. Absolutely. And cashing out on it. Right. Big time. It's American dream. Keep going. Keep going. All right, Pac. You look incredibly clean today. Yeah. The Janelle so sweet cool. fit match. The pants match the jacket. Yeah. Yep. Love yep. my shoes. You try to take them off my feet. They well, your shoes match everything. Thank you. Your shoes are something. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Pac, are we golfing right now or no? Yeah. We have been golfing. Yeah. So we're doing two out of five? Uh, I, look, uh, I want to say two. Yeah. I, I'm leaning one. Two out of five. I think two. He'll I make it. say three. 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 I was yeah. thinking three in my head as well. If he's playing, mm. three. How, how often are we playing? How, he lives on a golf course. Uh, I played, last week I played four times. Two. Oh, okay. got to be three. All right, three. He's played four times last week. Okay, there's only seven days in a fucking week. You played four of them. Yep. That's a lot of golfing. Mm-hmm. Got to go two out of five. Mm-hmm. You go two out of five, we'll give 20 winners a $500. As Cheeks is hanging out in the other room, watching along with incredible vibes. Baby Cheeks. Baby Cheeks. Pac-Man oh. Jones. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold Damn. the phone. 
It should have been three. You said that was yeah. guys golfing. Nobody, Nobody makes the first it. one. Yeah, wow. he's going on. He's making them all. Make five. He remembers the break on his green potentially from last off season. Uh, nice. Oh boom. no, we Gross. talked too soon. Pushed okay. it. Uh oh, rattled. Only has to go one of three here for twenty people to win five hundred dollars. Oh, that might go. Pack man, Joe. Oh, Man, it's got to go 50% the here. That's tough. You look golf good. and not working yeah. out. Got to go 50% <laughs> here on the final two for the people. 20 people, $500. If Pac Man Jones is able to bury this particular golf ball into that, not going to make it again. No. Two in a row. And that's right ahead. on. Oh, oh, that was a good look. Good, good, good pace. Great line. Good pace. Good pace. Good pace. Good he has been golfing. Good line. You know, yeah. He has been golfing. Yep. Not a lot of three putts happening. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Slow down. Ladies and gentlemen, he made the first putt. We came out and said, wow. Yeah. This guy needs to sign will live. Should have been three. <laughs> Holy shit, this guy's a golfer. Yeah. Then he missed the next three. Two of them, though, online. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Just not enough juice, which mm -hmm. means he has been golfing and has found the touch. Yeah. For sure. Hasn't been on this green in a long time. But if he's able to bury this last one right here, 20 people, $500. Here you go. Come on, Pac. What do you say, people, Pac? Pac? Come on, Pac. Come, Come, Come on, Pac. Oh. Ah, man. Got it. Oh. He got it. Did it, come on, what? Pac. Did it go Let's go. Let's go, Pac. Well done. Come on. I can't see from here. Stay on business. That's right. Bingo. Nice. SOB. SOB. 20 people, $500 because Pac Man Jones steps up and delivers a putt when the people need him. Thank you for the delay. Boys, great work today. In the back, great work. Thank you to Dalton Schultz. Thank you to Big Perk for joining us. AJ, great work over there in Ohio. 20 people, $500. Go Way to go, Pac. Come on, Pac. Man. Hey. All right, as we get out of here and prepare for another show tomorrow, it's going to be big. Huge. God damn. Yep. Tomorrow's show. Yeah. 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 Oh. People are not ready. Oh, <laughs> oh my. People are not. Bigger than those bison. That's mm -hmm. right. Bigger than those bison. Yeah, that's not too hard to be yeah. bigger than that. Not 16 feet tall. <laughs> 16 feet tall. Don't at talk the top. About, at the top. No emotion. Though. Don't talk about OJ like that. They are not naming the Bison in front of the new Buffalo Bills Stadium. Oh, OJ did. after OJ Simpson. <laughs> OJ, right. Jim, and Josh. Thurman. <laughs> Kidding me? We'll brainstorm <laughs> some more ideas. Okay. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice that might change their life. We're in this thing together. Team on me. Cheeks. Team on me. <laughs> Baby Cheeks. I had a baby Cheeks. I baby good, cheeks. Cheeks, good vibe. Cheeks. Yeah. Great vibe. Cheeks. cheeks. I had baby Cheeks. That boy Cheeks. <laughs> Team on me. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Team. Goodbye. Team.